Hey everyone, welcome to Pop XP. And before the show starts, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications when we go live and we upload awesome new content. And don't forget, if you can, make sure to share our stream on all your social media outlets. We appreciate it, and thanks for helping us grow the Pop XP channel. Good lunchtime, bro. Draw stream. This is just the beginning, old scalawags. Just the we beginning. To, we have to change this configuration. Hang on a second. Enhance. That's yes. That's what we're gonna do. Enhance. What's up, everybody? Scala, good to see you on this snowy day. Is it still snowing by you? It's still snowing. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's a snow day, bro. Working from home. Nice. Doing all that fun stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I apologize for uh, my table looking like this, but I had the table pretty gosh darn low right now. Look at my hand, Scal. I need some, some yeah, hands. Uh, Kevin Thomas, Hail Pop XP, Hail Billy. Currently working, but wanted to say hello. Well, thank looking you for doing to it. Thomas, a new shape. Well, thank you so much, brother. Yeah, right now what we're doing is, is I am drawing the cover. Hey, Dan, what's up, brother? What's up, Dan? Good afternoon. Hey, Billy. Hey, Billy. To, to the to the she gate crasher ashcat edition which is uh live right now on indiegogo and what we're going to be doing with that is uh how i basically go through my little art process i gotta draw anyway talk to some pals they're going to be joined by some friends uh and i guess i'll be uh doing this a little bit and uh i guess to give a little um intro back to what we have here so right now we have everyone's Everyone knows Anna Ishikawa. Forgive me, guys. It's just going to be off a little bit. So here's Anna Ishikawa on the right. But the character next to her, right? Right, is, right. It is, is, is Get Keppo, which is our Japanese character, which is the first. This is my first design for she, Scala. Really? Yes. Yep. So she's here. Very racy, like uh, if it. you will. Uh, sexy. Hilarious. Add a little camel toe to that. Hmm? Camel, Scala. Stop Had a little it. camel Please, toe. Bro. Stop it, Scal. Come on, bro. I gotta bring this up a little bit here. Let me fix this here. Got, got wires everywhere, scalawags. I see that. I see that. All right. So here's our little our little get kepo. And I'm gonna give a little insight on this character, a little background on her. But here it. she is, and she's oh quite sexy. And uh, she is going to be, uh, her and Anna Ishikawa are going to be teaming up in the Gatecrasher comic. But you see Anna's face, you see her, she's, she's kind of a little mischievous there, you know? Like I see that. Who's hotter? I'm hotter than you. And Anna's like, hmm. Hmm. What is up with this bitch, you know? I kind of like that original design, Billy. Thank you, Scala. Uh, I designed that, I think, in 1990. But I'll, I'll show you where I designed it, okay? I'm going to share my screen right now. Where did Where did you design it? Oh, how I'm glad you asked, Scala. At a local coffee shop? No, I, at FIT at college. Ah, so college. Uh, I'm going to share my screen right now, and I'm going to give you guys a little insight into just where she came from. Joseph Leland. Hey, Billy and friends. Hey, Joseph. What's up? Joseph, a lot of Italians here. Heroinberg. All right. Got the email in time. Hello, she fans. P.S. Oh, I met I J.C. Vaughn in person this week. Amazing. Heroinberg actually creates real superheroes. But I'm going to share the screen right now. All right. And here, look at this. So this is the first, my first inception of she. So Amazing. basically that is who uh, the our uh, Anna's teaming up with is my first incarnation of she. So she basically, I think this is 1990 and this is 91 right here. Uh, so she's kind of, you know, I don't behave, right? But you see, she's got that little red circle around her eye, like the Japanese flag. <laughs> I like so that. Like 22 when I came up with a 21. So, you know, and uh, I think it's yeah, 1990 I came up with this. So this is, uh, you know, before the image revolution. Um, yeah. And uh, so this is the basis of the character who is going to be joining with she. The get awesome. Kepo. How can I make this screen larger and share and, and keep sharing my screen to make it smaller? Is that possible, Scala? No, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. All right, well, I'm going to start drawing. I want to make this one the big one. Yeah, no, 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 not that. I'll stop sharing. But that's where this character came from. So it's going to be red, white, and black. Uh, oh, that's cool, Scala, for now. And uh, that's a little design. So 
basically, guys, what I do for my for my for my covers, I draw them on Xerox paper, right? Premium Xerox paper. It's a thinner paper, acid free, and I draw the whole thing, and then I have my light box. So I pop it on the light box, and then I take my art board and I put over it. And I gotta shut these lights off. So I'm not really gonna be able to see. It. Oh, look so at that! Just like faded in. See, and then what I do. Especially with she, which I've been doing a lot with 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 she, and it's a little bit off center because we're going to put the little crusade logo up here. Mm -hmm. We're going to put the she gate crasher ash can edition logo down here. So it's basically me just you know fine tuning, of course, the any anatomical problems and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, whoa! Look at that. Catch up, right? There you go. Autofocus. Yes, autofocus. So, like, see, she's kind of sexy here um, with the, uh, you know, with her boots. They're like shiny spandexy type boots. This is sort of a uh, halter top, if you will. And then that that progress progressed to into our Anna Shikawa here. So, That's awesome. Uh, and I'm gonna give her hair like like I shared earlier. Her hair's gonna have like a blue tone to it with the colors, and mm -hmm. Anna's hair has a gray tone to it. So now, are both characters just on the cover, or will we be? No, seeing... they're in the book. No, no, we're in the is... book. Okay, so, yeah, so I'm waiting for J.C. Vaughn, who is writing the the book. What happened? Oh, I put this here. Um, so J.C. Vaughn, uh, basically, what the story is that Anna is going to get trapped in comic book time, oh. and she's got to battle her way back to the present to her daughter Hotaru. And along the way, she meets Gatepko, and Gatepko uh, is is uh, is the one who's going to help her get through the way. But what's really cool, Scala, is that they are going to go through every genre of comics, starting in 1938, uh, and then we're going to go forward into we're going to have a whole bunch of. Um, uh, of uh, public domain characters, uh, call it in favors because I'd love to have some of my friends, um, uh, you know, their own um, create her own characters and make uh, make make cameo appearances in it. Uh, so she's going to travel through all decades, through all uh, genres, and we're gonna we're gonna have fun. We're gonna we're gonna explore the horror genre, World War II, westerns, dinosaurs, sci-fi, black and white. Uh, the black and white explosion, hard boiled, you know, for you know, for Zeta esque, all that stuff, and maybe That's even and, and maybe even some huge um, uh, creator on characters, which I've talked to a bunch of people, call some fr favors in for friends, they're all in it, uh, and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, we got uh, NRG Comics. Last Friday's Rob Observations featured, among other femme fatales, Billy Tucci She. It was a great listen. I got to tell you, Rob made my whole day. <laughs> he did. I couldn't believe the the, the 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 amazing things he said about me and 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 us and she. And you got to think that time, scale when you were just a lark, a mere lark, a I was, little baby. I was merely 10 lamp. years old. I was merely 10 years old. 10 years. It's so funny because I was only 20 when she came out. Yeah. Did you know that I was only 20 years old? That's how good I was. I was able to create a whole comic. Weren't you book. like 30? Weren't you like 30 years old? No, nah, I was like 26, I think, when she came out. Yeah. So basically, when I start drawing, I start with the eyes here. And I always start with the with the with the the hardest part, which I shouldn't. But that's just the way it is, old Scalawag. Let me see if these glasses are bigger. Scala, I'm gonna have to start um up in my uh your prescription my prescription here especially when it comes to doing working with the you know with with light boxes and stuff like that i see i see it's and uh, but i mean what a great th i mean rob like i said rob made my day saying all those nice things and it was an amazing time i don't know how many heroin bergs young uh dan is young um i don't know who you know how many people were around for then but it was an explosion so much so that this August 23rd, Thursday, sorry, Thursday, March 23rd, is the 29th anniversary of when she hit the comic stands. It's crazy. Well, I remember, dude. Heavy. So I am hoping to do, we have a new show on the Pop XP, don't we, Scala? Yeah, yeah. You want to 
the new weekly live show. And what's it? What is it, Scala? Thir- well, what is it? <laughs> Thursday Night Live with Billy Tucci. There it is. Even though every stream's like live with Billy Tucci. Yeah, I know. I should. Well, I, I, <laughs> but this time I'm going to talk about stuff I know about. Yeah, yeah right. Instead of being like, of- yeah, I, I know, I know about that. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of ruining the streams that I know nothing about, like talking Fake about it till you book. make it. Comic book. Yeah, really? That's Mortal true. V wants to know, are you okay after that pheasant injury? Dude, when that pheasant hit me in the nuts, can I share that? Yeah. All right, let's share it. Yeah. Let's share it. Some pheasant nut action. I got attacked by a pheasant, by a zombie pheasant. Attacked me. And I'm just working on some promos here, Billy. Oh, good. You'd work on those promos. Working on some promos. Professionals tonight. Yes. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, so here's our Zombie Sama Dorm of the Dead. We're, wait a minute. We're, we're, I think we passed 13,251. Let's see. Refresh that screen. Let's refresh bro. it. Look at this guy. Come on. Come on, Billy. You have no audio right now, dude. Do I have it now? Either. You gotta have your your uh draw. You're on your drawing table, Mike. Shut up! I gotta go back. Uh, okay. Oh. You gotta get on that Yeti, bro. All right, all right. Professionals will be on the Pop XP tonight. Can we tell them what you're talking about? God, dang it! This guy right here. Get that screen back up, Tucci. Get that screen back up. Tonight's all about conspiracies on the professionals. Yeah, I'm in. Now I'm in, right? Yeah, you're in. Okay, good. All right. So let me let me let me share the screen. So uh what we have is is uh last month we went me, my son Matthew, my buddy Tony went pheasant hunting out in the wilds of Long Island. So let me see if I can share the screen now. Okay. Shared perfectly. Let's go back to the stream yard. All right. So uh, <laughs> let me go to the let me go to the zombie summit dorm of the dead. And move it over to this screen now, Scala. There you go. All right. So here's my other video. And uh, oh no, this is not the blooper. I'll share the blooper, but here's the first video, okay? Hello, everybody. Teen Sensation Billy Tucci, and I'm hoping each and every one of you out there will support me and John Broly as Zombie Sama Dorm of the Dead, which is now live. And I'm out here in the wilds of Long Island, zombie pheasant hunting. And let me tell you about these zombie pheasants. They are raptors. They are disgusting, infected. <laughs> they're going out and they are raptors. And I'm trying to say ravenous. And hawks and owls. Mice. Turning them into zombified, infected vermin. And let me tell you how evil these things are. Is that when they... Rooster! Yeah. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. Come on. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. Zombie Sama 2. Storm of the Dead. Hey, Scala, can you make a video if I send you the bloopers and you pop them all together? Yeah, you want to do a blooper reel? Yeah, all right. Let me let me share the other screen now. Let me share the one where I got hit in the dick with it. <laughs> Actually, chucked it right at me. Hit me right in my nuts. Hitting the dick. Hitting the dick. Mortal V. Go. The pheasant had it coming. There we go. Right here. And Genovese. This is Whoop. gold. Here, and I'm hoping you will all support me. And- Hang on there. I'm Broly is zombie sama dorm of the dead. Basically, I'm out here zombie pheasant hunting, which is a infestation on on the wilds of long island and let me tell you about the zombie bird bird oh, <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> oh no it glitched out i it love did? the shadow i love the shadow though yeah my buddy tony throat throat. Throat. That was, that's all the funny part hang on let me rewind it. here we go and let me tell you about these zombie feds bird bird <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and you always want to know what a scotsman went is under his kill uh, put it on safety uh, comics borgs tucci free balling yeah that's no i had underwear man yeah i'm traveling through all that seal that crap back there that's where we where we hunted through all that 
all those the, the sticker bushes and all. So were they I tickling you? Underwear. Were they tickling you on your way through? <laughs> Scaring all the pheasants away? Scaring the pheasants away, sure. All right, let's make the other thing bigger than me. Nobody cares about me. All right, so uh, <laughs> yeah, so Zombie Summer is doing great. We are at now the campaign is at You're at thirteen thousand like two fifty, right? I think we were over that. Yeah, thirteen two fifty. Hang on. Let me share it again. No man, we did a uh, we had over a thousand dollars. So let's. Uh, You're at fourteen thousand dollar night. There you go. Thank you all. So we nice. are closing in on our second day, or going on a third day of our fifteen thousand dollar goal. Thank you. And then, of course, I'll be throwing uh, thank you all for supporting us. It's a great campaign. It's a fun book. Awesome variants. Look at that. Rainy Strykalski, who's coming on the very first Thursday Night Live with Billy Tucci this Thursday at 10 p.m. The great Dan Mendoza. Look at that. Zombie Tramps, Dan Mendoza. Love that. Love that. So, it's just adorable. John's uh, Indiegogo exclusive edition, which is taken off of the... Uh, the Vault of Horror, classic Vault of Horror comic. My uh, hardcover edition. Great cover. Yep, great cover. Thank you. Oh, you're too great good. cover. And then, uh, the Winter Ronin, great special one-shot, 22-page one-shot uh, by John, which uh, basically tells a story between Zombie Sama 1 and Zombie Sama Dorm of the Dead. Of course, I threw my original artwork up. I'll be throwing this original artwork up as well. And uh, there, yeah, she gate crashed with me and uh, old JC Vaughn. Great book, fun book, a lot of work. John's been working on this book for two years, he's been drawing it. And uh, thank you all for coming out and supporting us. We truly, we really appreciate it. So now back to drawing. Now, now gate crashers, though, yeah, let's, let's talk a little history on that because sure. that's not that's not a new idea. No, gate crasher was originally conceived. To be a sequel to the Cyblade She, to the you know um, that epic, which was like one of the biggest selling books of nineteen. I think it was maybe the third biggest selling comic of nineteen ninety three, nine ninety five. I think. So um, yeah. So but then and 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 Mark was like, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. And then I didn't hear from him. And I get it because he's busy <laughs> and all, and I don't want to bother him. Mark so who? Just, Mark who? Mark Silvestri. What? The great Mark Silvestri. Great guy. Great the guy. king. So, and that's fine. I mean, we had a lot of fun with the first book, and you never know. I might be able to get uh That's not, I'm not giving up on getting a uh, side blade in, into this book. That would be great. Yeah, it would. How do I make the other thing bigger, Scala? Am I drawing? Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. There you go. Now I know it's 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 hard, but this is basically how I draw. Um, I'll go in with with this. this is a this is a two H right here. Then I'm going to go in, I'll enhance it with my HB. Ooh. These pencils, this one is from college. So I bet you I drew the first she with this one. And I have a red one, too. You can see it's all banged up. And uh, so this is my... And then what I do for my finishes, instead of inking, I go in with... Hitting it with a little uh, PA. Oh shit! I forgot to wear my glove, Scala. Yeah, yeah come my on. My little Feral Prismacolor black pencil. This is an old one, obviously, and uh, and it gives it a really. It, and this this black pencil like melts on the on the board. Um, it's it, and uh, but I gotta wear this bad boy. You have to be mindful of your pressure when yes. using that. Yeah, pencil. you totally do. I, you yep. do. That's why it was black. I fucked up quite a bit of uh, images, little drawings. Kids, yeah, yeah, why not? Oh, we got a super chat from Nicholas Gear. What up, hey, man? Hey, hang on. She now. gate crasher. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, gate crasher. Heck yes. Our boy Blevins just got the message. No reception at the paper. You two looking good. Blevins, where are you, Blevins? Blevins is, is like he's typing away. He's banging away on the on the old typewriter at the. Yeah, at he the does the uh, advice column for his paper. Really? Yeah. It's the knowledge of bountiful Blevins. Should we just should we write in anonymously as as like just somebody with a real with a problem like like with a weird sexual problem? Yeah. And 
and, and have him try to help us out of it? Every time my wife coughs, I get an erection. Oh my god. I love the sound of coughing. Look there at that. Look at those strokes. I Where's the... JC Vaughn? JC is working. He's got painters over today and he's working. So he said he'll come in. He said he was gonna come in. But um yeah, so this is gonna be a fun book. Uh yeah. this and, and the goal is this book launches this summer on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. And um this book will be done by the time we launch. Because our next book in May, like 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 I was saying earlier, and I wrote in there, is uh the Zombie Sama. Zombie Sama is uh is gonna be a very quick campaign. Uh, we John Broly has finished all 104 pages of art. Mindy Lopkin has lettered all the 104 pages, and I think we have 30 pages of color left. And the colors are due on March 15th, which means this book will go to the printer on the 17th at the latest, which is I mean the 16th, which is a, a Friday. Mm -hmm. And oh no no Saturday. Sorry I'm sorry uh, on the 17th that Friday, and then we should be getting. We'll, we, the, we'll get the book at the end of April and then we'll fulfill it in, in early May. Oh, nice. Yeah. Is this distracting that you can't really see it or is this okay like this? Scout? It comes and goes. Depends on where your hand is and the way you turn the paper. Yeah, I just meant the actual paper itself like that the, that I'm doing it. Like, should I have penciled it all first and then just went in and sort and inked it live? Yeah, you really fucked this one up, bro. I did, didn't I? Just, just it. throwing it out there. Such a piece of shit, Nicholas Gear. <laughs> Let's so see what you got. Cursing. I've been Brian cursing. Blevins giving advice to a guy who pees a little every time he step his stepdaughter hugs him. She is oh, twenty years old. Depends. <laughs> Delicious. Well, it depends. Delicious. What's is, is is his stepdaughter? Is she a large woman, or is she a, a small child? Is she squishy like a gummy bear? A little bounce? Is it, yeah. Oh, Dan Dan says, nah, you're good. I'm happy to see your process. Oh, thanks, Dan. Well, what well, a lovely guy. Hey, Dan, um, we are going. Scala, tell Dan uh Genovese where we're going on um in, in June. Oh, a little convention? Yeah. The Garden City or Garden State Comic Con? No? Is that not where we're going? Garden State Comic Fest. <laughs> what do they do there? They have those funny books? So anyway, Garden State Comic Fest is going to have an all-star lineup. Right all now, for sure, we have me, Graham Nolan, uh, Andy Smith, Dan Fraga, some special guests. I'm going to let them let them make the official announcement before I do. Um, that'll blow you away. Uh, then, of course, Walter, Walter and Louise Simonson are going to be there. Howard Chaikin is going to be there. Um, uh, Greg Hildebrandt will be oh, there. Greg's going to be there? Yes. Oh, Every that's year, awesome. bro. I love that guy. Oh, now Scal is going to be there, right? You're going to be sitting there interviewing people with the microphone? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be like, hey, Greg. You like drawing? Can you draw me, Greg? Can you draw my nips? Draw me like one of your French girls, Greg. Yeah, draw me like one of your French girls. Photo realistic. Will, will Blevins be at Garden Fest? Will Ble Blevins make it to the Garden Garden State Comic Fest? What hey, do you think Chris the odds are? No, I don't think so. No, no. He's not Chris Thacker. It. Mr. Tucci, I want to fly in for that convention. How best to get from New York City to that area? Uh, I'll are take you a in plane. New York City? Or are you flying? You could fly into Newark Airport. It's in Morristown, New Jersey, which is north. I would say you're best to fly into the Newark airport. Well, it's not, camp, it's not that long. What is it? A three hour drive. Shut up. Shut your face. You shut your face. Shut your face. It's about, uh, for me, it's going to be probably two, uh -uh. two and a half hours. Cause I'm out here on, on, on the Island, but it's, it's probably 15 minutes out of New York city. Well, it's, um, it's, it's three hours for me. It's what? three hours for me, and I'm coming from Connecticut. Right. Well, I'm going to come in. I think I'm coming in Friday night. Yeah, I'm coming in Friday. Uh, set up on Friday. Go to dinner with uh, Andy Smith and Graham Nolan and Dan Fraga 
And then uh, Saturday night, uh, Saturday night's going to be a hoot, man. Nick is coming in. Catratus, our boy. Really? Oh, that's yeah, cool. Nick's coming in. We had a nice steak dinner last year with some very special people. Ethan Van Skyver came in and Cecil came in. We had a nice manly steak dinner. And then what we did was me and Graham took our trucks. Maybe Scala, you could bring your truck with you this time. Bring my truck? Yeah, you got a truck. You want me to bring my truck? Yeah, pop open the hatchback. Yeah. Yeehaw. And, um... We basically had a cigar and a Hawaiian shirt, Hawaiian shirt and bourbon night. I was drinking nice. scotch. And then those Star Wars guys came, the Star Wars actors, and they drank all my scotch, the liney sea suckers. What Star Wars actors? There were some Star Wars actors. I don't know. Like, like extras? I think they were voice guys. They, uh, maybe. I don't, they weren't like nobody like – it wasn't like, you know, the famous Star Wars people. They were like probably smaller Star Wars people or something. Oh. So they're probably just the voice actors. Probably the voice actors, yeah. Or the extras. I would rather fly into Philly. Philly's probably two, you're probably two and a half hours away from Philadelphia, I think, at Morristown. Remember, Morristown is is North Jersey. Oh, Oop, we got a we got a visitor. Hello, old bean. Hello, gentlemen. How's Inky doing? Uh, Inky is. Oh, uh, we got two visitors. What? Look at that. What? Hey! Hey! Okay. How's that for timing? What's happening? Whoops, let me get my camera in line here. So let's do that. Jimmy, what do you got going on tomorrow? Anything special? Uh, lunch and, uh, oh, I have a Kickstarter in the morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> launching in the morning. 9 a.m. Uh, Painkill Jane Kickstarter starting tomorrow morning. Can't wait for that one, man. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah I've, been, I've been working on it for a while because it's two books. Um, instead of collecting them, I did them as two issues because I think people just like comic format. Like every time I collect something, you know, but at least with this, I got to break up the story. And then, you know, um, they each have uh, I, I have once Santa Cruz drawing the main story. And then I have uh, Peach, you know, Peach Momoto. Uh, yeah, he's doing, absolutely. He's doing yeah. the opening of the second issue, so it's kind of cool. Oh, awesome! Oh, that is yeah. awesome. I really like. Jimmy, the, I you really like the, the the two issue thing. Justin's been doing that, uh, and uh, I really like it. Yeah, people, people, you know, I, it's like whenever I do a, a a trade, like just right out of a graphic novel, you know, it does okay. But when I do separate issues, I think because some of the audience likes to collect the books and they like to have yeah. a comic format. And I notice a lot of them getting CGC, like the top kill ones got a lot of them got CGC. Yeah. Um, nice. Um, yeah, I got a weird know, question. And, and the thing is, is the thing is, for, I, I, def I, sort of, I sort of default that way. I like the individual issues. But on the other hand, the uh, the size that uh, uh, Brubaker and Phillips are doing with Reckless, I really like that too. So I, I guess it just sort of goes by individual taste. Yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, people buy what they're going to buy, right? The Kickstarter is there as like a big store, right? They can pick out what they want and, or what they don't want. And uh, this one, we got a lot of great – I got some good cover artists. So we got that Joe Casada guy back uh, doing a cover and uh, Joe Linsner. Nice. Uh, I like, oh, nice. I like I like how you said this time you've got a lot of great cover artists. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I'm sorry, I've backed your campaigns before, man. You always have good cover artists. You know, I, 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 I was gonna get. Uh, I think Billy owes me a cover, but he's yeah, gonna have yeah. to do it for nothing. <laughs> um, so I will do what I promise. I just got to get caught up. All right, all right. I, I Jimmy, uh, is there a uh, a pre-launch page like with a link that maybe you could put in the private chat? There, there is. Uh, let me. Hmm, let me see how I do that first. Well, we could link to it. Send, yeah, no, I'll send and we'll share it. Yeah, it's right in my profile on Twitter. Um, I, can, I can grab it. I'll grab you it. You grab it? Okay. It's yeah, I got oh, Twitter Jimmy, open. look, Jimmy. It's fun. I, I saw Joe post yeah, something. Brian. He's like a hey, cover Brian. premiering. What's Brian that? Levin says, it's my bestest friend. I never got the link. Well, he thanks. got the link. Uh, if, if Brian was that close of a friend of mine, he would have already been signed up. So, uh, oh, wow, Jimmy knows everybody's Brian, signed oh. Brian, you're, you're falling behind, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> now, now Blevins is going to come on. Just, just let me know. Oh, yeah. 
So, Billy, what are you drawing now? What's that cover for? All right, so we're doing She Gay Crasher. This is how I draw, Jimmy, um, is that I'll do it. She really... Gay Crasher. Wait, am I Gay okay, Crasher? So gay... Oh, I'm going to Je – Jeff. Okay, so She Gay Crasher is uh, Jeff and – me and Jeff. Jeff is writing it. Um, it's it's our campaign, our summer campaign, and mm -hmm. it's basically going to be Anna Ishikawa gets trapped in comic book time. And she's got to battle her way through every comic book decade and genre to get home. So it's a lot of fun, a little quantum leap sort of thing. Um, and we talk yeah. about all the various, you know, the the various and, trends in comics. And and and, and, yeah. and, it, and and I'll do my level best that it won't be a diatribe about creator ownership, but it's about creator ownership. Right. Yeah. It just doesn't start out with like somebody that looks like Billy and I. Sitting there with a gun in our mouth and, and watching <laughs> watching the latest watching the latest movie of our character done by the big two. Oh. And uh and and then we're just like, why, why God, why? It's and then we look at him and then we look at each other, Jimmy, and we go, Don't let this happen to you. Yeah. And then right. we flash into the I like this. Do you see you know, do you see what Hero and Berg just put? Well, the barrel of the gun should have my face on it. So Billy, when you put it in your mouth. My face goes, no, Billy, don't. don't. There's, a, there's a better way to do this. <laughs> the Tucci verse of madness. Uh, yeah, but, Billy, we're gonna, but, but we're also going to explore, and Jimmy, I'm going to hit you up. Uh, Jeff and I are going to hit you up for a favor because we're talking to a bunch of uh, our friends, and um, right. we've got a lot of cameos coming. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but we got a real yeah. big one. Uh, we talked at San Diego, and uh, he was like, yeah, sure. So uh, it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun that with that. Canadian accent, or did he just What's that? say that? No. Did he say yeah. No, he didn't say it with a Canadian accent. No. 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 I was just guessing. I was just guessing. Gonna say, I'm just gonna say, not that big, eh? Um, okay. Oh, okay. Um, just, just well, really I got some big. Oh, he's really big, or really big, like really big. Oh, he's large. So yeah, or she's large. No, no, like like. She's character. large. Character we know it's not a shame out. because she murdered you already. Yeah, the character's really well <laughs> endowed. But uh yeah, so and but we're gonna bring in a bunch of public domain characters, um, have a little bit of a you know, we, we explore, like I said, horror, western, dinosaurs, the the sci-fi of the of the sixties. Um, wanna go a little elf quest esque for the seventies, you know, space adventures. I do you know, think like I like the western with dinosaurs, I think just Yeah, that's dinosaurs. exactly what we're gonna have. Yep. Well, if the yep. dinosaurs have giant guns and a giant hat the size of a house. <laughs> no, I, I like that. I, I like, like that idea. idea. Yeah. So Jimmy, this is right here. This character yes. to the left. Now this is she, as you can see. So I start. Yeah. I do my covers, you know, real rough. So I do it on right. on Xerox paper first, and then right. I'll put it on my light box and I'll clean it up. Um, mm -hmm. But this character here is Get Kept Go, and she is my original. She, if I can share it, Nile Scala. Mm -hmm. Let's go to that. Hang on. Let's go to the videotape. Let's go to the videotape. Here we go. So, Jimmy, this is the character I drew in 1990. She. Oh my God! Before so I this met is you. when I was in college. So I was coming up with a, you know, with this new character, um, and uh, and that's. I mean, look at look at look at just the, the circle around the red eye and stuff. Somebody punched you in the eye. Yeah, yeah. And this is the character, and I remember Debbie's like, oh, really? Okay. If you think I'm like, no, I'm telling you, this is gonna be really cool. If, you know, and Debbie didn't like the ass out part, I think. <laughs> she did I think Debbie actually posed for this, though. Yeah, she, she uh, yeah, the, the, now the, you're in trouble. You know, I'm, you know, I was just gonna say you're a genius about getting in trouble, Billy. I know. Do you still really have the photo reference on that, Billy? You still have some photo reference on that? I one? do, Jimmy. I will send you the photo reference for this. Thank and you. you're gonna laugh. <laughs> you're gonna laugh. So um, anywho. Whoops, where'd I go with that? Shit. This is our on the bus, by the way. Hot oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that. Yep, yep, yep. All that. Blah, blah, blah. We're coming to the end. Coming to the end. Look at that. Anna fights a rat. She loses. What? She loses? And then look at him. She he takes off. Look at this. He's about to you think he's gonna kill himself and he breaks crack and she's now free again because she was nude in the very first episode. And look at her rash she did. He did it. He confesses to all of Anna's crimes, giving her a second chance at life. And the cops walk away, and he broke his sword in the ultimate, the ultimate move of uh, of of uh, sacrifice for her. Oh, that's a good cover. I never used that cover. 
anyway, Stan Sakai gave us a beautiful introduction. So yeah, so going back, so here we are. There so you go. yeah, yeah. So that's a character, and and Jimmy, here's a funny story: is that, uh, you know Neil Hansen, right? Remember he was at uh, Comic Artist, uh, not Comic yeah. Artist. It was what was the magazine? Uh, Comics yeah. Value Monthly. Right. Yeah. So Neil, we had a party. Uh, these guys I met who were supposed to fund the book, they had no money at all, and it, it was all a scam. But we had this party, and and we invited the comic book press, and Maureen, you know, Maureen McTeague came, Steve uh, from Comics Value Monthly, and Neil came. And they were looking at it, and Neil liked it, and, and he was looking at the art, and he's like, now this is this is 93. And he's like, right. yeah, what's with this red circle, though? I'm like, no, it's a red, get it? It's just the white face paint and the red Japanese. He's like, you don't need that. He's like, get rid of that. And it was like the best thing I ever did was was to get rid of that. But she's gonna. Yeah, but Dead now Shot. she's gonna take her Doesn't place. That? Yeah. Oh, Blevins is here. Yeah. Oh, Blevins. I would I say know. Blevins is here. Oh, hey, Blevins. In his child. Yeah, there, form. Defi- there definitely was no link for old Blev. It was sent. It, it was, was sent. No, it was sent to some some other Brian Blevins. It wasn't sent to me. Well, if you if you were on our mailer, you would you know if you were on subscribe to our mailer, you would get everything. Um, right. Are you talking? What mail are you talking about? Paper films one for the, the Kickstarter. You're not on the paper films. You don't get the, the news. Like, the news. I 100 percent am on there. All right, hey Billy, let's let's let these two hash it out. Okay, here, let's go. Uh, I 100. Now, now do you have the link? Did you sign up, Ryan? I'm already signed up. Are you talking about for the Painkiller Jane thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, I'm already signed up. Oh, you see, Niall and, and Billy were telling me you weren't. No, he's not um, signed up. He's not I, I don't even up. know. First of all, so I, don't they, would, I don't know how they, they would might. know that I wasn't signed up, but yeah, I'm definitely signed up for that. Go we'll share everything, Blevins. I know. I know. Well, that's it. That's all my. It's, that's that's no, I guess. So. Now, Jimmy. So you watch it. So Jimmy. Um, do yeah. we have the link there? Can we can we go to the? Uh, can we show the campaign now? That's that is what I'm doing. That yeah, is what bring, I'm doing. bring it, bring it up, and let me see if I'm. I know I'm. I know I'm already set up because it wasn't. You couldn't actually buy it, right? It was just to notify. No, not yet. Tomorrow, tomorrow goes up live. And that's uh that's okay. uh, um um. That is Ben Caldwell on that piece right there, and oh, yeah, uh, with, with me inking it and me coloring it. So. Oh, nice. really? Oh, wow. oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I got. I, I just uh, Ben did a pen, nice pencil drawing, and I went and had some fun with it. It's a, it's, it's a bizarre piece, but I kind of like it with the little cherubs, with baseball bats and, and guns. guns. Yeah, that doesn't happen in the book, but I'm so tempted to just write a book about that. Where she dies and then she gets a, a gang of cherub killers. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the only? Can we scroll on this page, or it's just a page now? No, it's just it's the, just uh, a notification page. Yeah, the live video goes up tomorrow at at nine, and uh, we got four hundred fifty followers. That's not bad. No, that's great. Jimmy, are you going to uh, have like limited edition ones like you did last time? We have uh, this. Amanda's doing like two connecting covers that are not for kids and those aren't shown they just say mystery covers but that's limited and then we have a um and then like joe joe's cover there's a the regular version and then there's a black and white version as an add-on that's super limited like 100 i think 125 or something like oh that. wow yeah no because um, those always go real quick so yeah i mean you want to you want to do the chase stuff but i mean at the end of the day i also want people to you know get the book so i mean it, it's the chase stuff's nice for the people that do the collecting like that. You know what I mean? Hey, can um, I can I point out that Nile is sharing his screen and he's not notified? I'm not notified. That is Brent correct. Coleman. Hey, man, uh, thanks for joining the uh, mailing list. Yes. What's up, Vaughn? Oh, Vaughn. Vaughn That's Coleman. a familiar face. That's a familiar face. Vaughn's a great kid. Have you met Vaughn? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Billy <laughs> said he's the future. <laughs> Billy said he's the future of comics. I, I like that he has the energy of like ten people. You know, I, 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 he's I, got I, great energy. Yeah, I, I, you know, we need more people like that. Um, I have, I have that kind of energy, but I'm, I, I have it in a quiet way. You know. So vaughn has got the good kind of energy, not like my energy from almost thirty years ago. Was that a little too much? Uh, well, there was a reason they called you the rooster back then. 
That's right. <laughs> no, Rooster. The man they used to call him Rooster Boy. Rooster Boy. Yeah. I don't uh, I don't have uh, like quite the rooster. Cock a doodle doo. So this this uh, she gate crasher. I, I used to do a book called Gate Crasher. Are they in that book? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Is that okay that we have that title then? Um, I only own a, a small percentage of the book. It's owned by Garib Seamus. So um, but that's just a title. You can't own yeah. the title. You can't yeah, own it's the title. Just a title. No. You literally can come out with a book called Gate Crashes tomorrow. And it, as long as it's not the characters in the book. Uh, or the well, logo. Let me, let me or the put logo. it in perspective. The logo. Let me put it in perspective. In, in 2001, I came out with a book called The Resistance for Wildstorm. And I own the book. I got all the rights back and everything. But since then, uh, there's been video games called The Resistance. There's been a show. There's been another comic book from, what is it, AWA Comics? Put yep. out a book that yep. Chuzinski did called The Resistance. So I can't do anything about it unless they take my story or do something. So you, can, you can't you can own a title, is what I've been told by my lawyers many times. Yeah, me too. Uh, Unfortunately, yeah, with us, we have a, there's a, uh, a, a French book called She. Right. And it's about a Chinese character or something. And, uh, and I'm like, you know, I contacted my lawyers and talking to cop. And he's like, yeah, there's really nothing you could do about it. It's not like you called it, you know. No, Spider Man. It's a right. word. It's it's right. a very popular word in the most populous language in the world. Right. I, I had Chinese, a, um, so. we had a, there's a paper films in the a paper film in London, and it's a talent agency. And um, you know, I I couldn't do it. You know, because we do two different things. They said we can't really own it. Um, but we made sure it's the first search in the uh, when you go on Google our mm. page the mm -hmm. first. So, Jimmy, do you own do you own Twenty One Down too? So I own. Uh, uh, well, here's the funny thing with Twenty One Down. It's like I've gotten I, every comic. I mean, every comic book character book that I did at DC, um, and there was a lot of them. I've gotten all of it back except for Twenty One Down. Oh, geez. Okay. Um, because Twenty One Down at the time. There was some funny stuff going on, and the car and the and the contracts were not the same contract as my resistance, or as my Twilight Experiment, or anything. And therefore, DC owns it. You know, I so I have a piece of it. If it ever does anything, I, I make a couple of bucks. Um, but we've been talking to them about just getting the rights to collect it. You know, and we also have a 13th issue that never saw print, so we would put that in the collection. I, I I I love that series. I, I remember it very fondly. Thanks. Thanks. I was uh we actually were supposed to get a second year, and we wrote the first issue. It was drawn and not lettered and colored, but it was drawn, and I inked it. And then um, Jim Lee was supposed to do the covers on the book, and Jim didn't have time for it anymore. And then Wildstorm said, "Well, we're not gonna do it." So. Um, but everything else I got back. I mean, I even got back GI Zombie. I got back, you know, like I said, Twilight Experiment. A whole bunch of my DC properties I got back, and all of my That's Dark Horse stuff I did I got back. Um, so I'm sitting on a lot of stuff that I just have to find time to pursue. I'd love have to you, do GI Zombie. What yeah. do you guys think of of the idea of doing? Um, and Graham Nolan, Graham Nolan did it uh, an anthology, and it did really well. He did over 100k with it. Right. Um, Jimmy, what, what do you think about getting a, getting teams of guys and making an anthology book of, say, four of those properties with maybe, what, I don't know, 18, 20 page, you know, stories in each one? Do you think that there's an audience for that? I, I think, you know, I think if it's um, I look at it as like if it's the issue after the last issue and it continued, I'd love to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the story kept going. Um you know, sometimes when you do like that, you have to a, a, a book, a single issue, or re, you have to reintroduce everything, right? Because there's an audience yeah. that's long gone and doesn't know the property. And um, I would yeah. like to do more GI Zombie. I would like to do more uh, another Resistance book, to be honest with you, with Justin. Um, what about Jimmy? What, I have what about a, the I, I just up a monthly gig, so that's going to take up a little of my time right yeah, now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Jimmy, what about the Monolith? Were you going to do a second collection? Yeah, so so that's another one where um, I have to get three issues of it and take Batman out because there's Batman's in three issues, and I have to just <clears throat> get the artist to 
draw Batman as another character. Mm-hmm. You know, I could call him the Bat or the, the or the or the the Wing winged Bat. assassin. Wing yes, assassin. But Tony. Just name him Tony. Yeah, the flying, yeah Howard. flying rodent. Um, so I have to change the art to do a full collection of that. But I don't know if there's an audience for 12 issues of, of, of a trade of that, you know? Right. Um, Jimmy, uh, J- Jeff, what do you think, like, for a Kickstarter to do, um, you know, like, to do reprints of these books that are 15, 20 years old or so? You know, listen, I think one of the things one of the things that you guys that have run very successful campaigns uh, should keep in mind in your scheduling is the ability to drop one of these things uh, that's essentially a reprint uh, in. Uh, they, of course, take work. You got to be cleaned up. Some stuff you have to, you know, you never know what needs to be redone on it, depending on how old the material is mm-hmm. and, and, and all that. But you guys both, uh, Billy and Jimmy, run very successful campaigns. And these could be supplemental, quick, quicker campaigns. Um, uh, and that's just that's just my observation. And I say that, you know, as a as not only as a, a collector, but as you know, somebody who admires what both of you have done in terms of uh, all the lessons I learned is when you from you guys are when you click go on the campaigns, you're in the customer service business, not the creating business. Mm, that's true. That's true. You know, a lot of uh, JC, a lot of my energy, a lot of energy goes into reprinting stuff in the past. You know. Yeah. And there's part of me that says like I have this like limited wick on my candle. You do. And, and I and I just and I and like so if I spend so much time looking backwards, it's kind of tough. I mean, I I, I got to be honest. I, I like working on new things, and I think I had like a chance with some of that stuff. I, and I don't mind like other people using it or me saying, "Hey, yeah, if you want to do something and use the character, great." I've had that in the past, but I think too much looking back is not a healthy thing for me, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I, I probably want to do a, a digital collections. You know, like the that might be a little easier to do because I don't have some of the older books. I don't have the film on some of the really older stuff, like the yeah. original thing, yeah. James, I, I actually have to get it scanned and stuff like that. But I, I uh, like my next Kickstarter, I'm doing a hardcover book for a thing called Fantasima that it's all done. It's like a 80 something page graphic novel. And while I'm doing Jane, I'm going to just send that to the printer and print a thousand. I hope I can sell a thousand. You know, like I'm trying to think ahead a little bit. Yeah, I uh, I, I, I love yeah. that kind of quick turnaround. But I I get your meaning about the you you, you have a limited time. I mean, you know, we've all yeah. And I mean, we're at that age. We've all lost some people, and you we, yeah, we're, yeah. we I mean, are you we're know, on the clock. We're on the clock. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, look at I look at Billy and he has she. That's his character. Boom. You know, mm-hmm. um, with Painkiller Jane, I I co-own it, right? So it's me yeah. and Joe. You know, um, I I think on on some level my brain is going you know what's the stuff i created by myself is is what i should be pushing a little more and i i'm probably not going to be known as the guy known for one character i mean i, I haven't stumbled on that character yet I, I think um but i also have a really big interest in exploring so many different genres that i feel like i feel like i'm handcuffed if i'm doing one thing and that's just that's just my brain i can't it's like it's like i, I don't have it's like music. I listen to so such a diverse amount of music because my brain is always looking for something new, and and you know it's a little hungry for that stuff. Um, so for my Kickstarters, they're all over the place. You know, yeah. I come back to Jane because it's fun, and I and I don't do Jane until I have another story to tell. There's something about it that I want to say, but you know, I mean, I can I can just stick with Jane all day long. But I, I'm kind of like I, I keep trying to challenge myself with different genres and and. I think my favorite part of writing the different genres is actually going in and investigating and researching. And I happen to love history, as you know, so I like to go back and, you know, uh, history has a ton of stories not told. Um, but, you know, I, all right. I, all right. Speaking I, of history. I, wish I, had more, I wish I had five of me. So, you know, I'm sure Billy yeah. feels the same. And, you know, I wish there was five of me that were as aggressive as one of me is because then I'd have an empire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. or, at hey, least hey, worry, or at least I wouldn't worry about every campaign. I mean, it's funny. I, I've done 17 under my name and a bunch under paper films. Wow. And I still, I still, tomorrow I'll still be sweating it in the morning. Did I do the right thing? Did I, did I price this right? Or did I offer this? You know, it doesn't Did I get all the typos? Did I correct all the typos? Oh my God. I go over, you know, I know. 
Hey, go. hey, Jimmy, we got a question from Glitch. Yeah. He says, will there be a Painkiller Jane <laughs> collection, including all the old 22 Bride comics, etc.? Yeah, I, I, I think there will. I just don't think it's going to be anytime soon. I think it will be uh, years from now. I'll do it because I'm still writing stuff. You know, I, 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 I learned from Billy about omnibuses. It looks like too much work. Oof. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and I think it might be something I do down the line where I hand the library over to somebody and let them do it. You know, I got, a, I, I got, the, I got Billy, a question. Billy, Billy, Billy scared me with that one. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a lot, but but there it's very time consuming. But a few of the issues, I think, two of the issues, we had to we didn't have the files like like you, they just don't exist. They were on like side quest drives or something. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Mindy Lopkin came in and was able to scan, you know, scan in those pages at like twelve hundred DPI. Right. And then you the what is it now like the pixel adder? There's some that adds pixels to it, and yeah, and, and you were able and to clean it, and it was amazing. You can't tell which ones are scanned in, at least you know, I'm sh I can't. I um, can't. and which ones are the original black and white. I mean, sorry, the original um, you know, uh CDs, which right. thank God that we were able to save some on CDs. It's like that's what Top Cow did, you know, that Brian Haberlin would send me see, oh, here's your books. I'm like, oh thank God, thank you. Yeah, right. no, a lot, a lot of our film was a yeah. lot of film was lost. I mean, if Joe and I ever did like an Ash collection, we could actually scan the original art again and color it because we don't have film for it back then. Yeah. Film, right, and we don't have. They lost all the film, so it would either be a scan or us doing it from scratch. But um, you know, like, wow. again, that stuff is so. I mean, I watched Billy with the on the bus thing, and and I love the idea of a painkiller Jane on the bus. Don't get me wrong. I would love to get rid of all these books on my shelves and have one. <laughs> um, it's like Harley Quinn. When they did the three omnibuses, Amanda and I got rid of like stacks of trade books because it's been collected like 85 different ways. And we're like, oh, we could just have the omnibuses, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think um, that's something for later on when I'm that old decrepit man and I have some young, uh, you know, young dudes that want to, uh, guys and girls that want to, have some interest in collecting like a bunch of Vaughn's running around putting it together. You know? <laughs> yeah, I Vaughn's a talented. Yeah, because even if you can do it, I think the fans would love it. Even if you could do it digitally to do a digital on the bus. Right, right. Again, but there's so much man hours. Yeah. And women uh, hours, I guess. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be old stick in the mud here and say no digital. Come on. Um I want to I did the book. creator on heroes digital JC. I did the creator on heroes. Of course. I I know. And that and, thing was like that thing was like three hundred pages. And truthfully, that was a great project. And I, I I understand it. I just I I just love the books. All right. Hey, I gotta go back to work, but I got one question for you, Jimmy. In the stuff that you got back from DC and you're you're still talking to them about 21 down, any chance you could get Jonah Hex? Oh <laughs> so you know, and, and on one level it's good that James Gunn didn't focus on Jonah Hex in his uh Next couple of years, <laughs> that 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 helps in a way. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I you know my my thing is I'd love to get to a little black out of there because that's completely our creation. Oh yeah. really? Yeah, but that's not going to happen. No, <laughs> uh, I, I, I tried. I, I had I, another character called the Barbary Ghost that we did uh, uh, in the back, and they 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 were like, "You're we're absolutely not giving that back to you." And I'm like, "Okay, it's fair enough." They like the character. They'll never do anything with it, but they just don't want to give it back. I just, um, I just wish that they could do a movie based on what you and Justin did. Uh, you know, I, I think somewhere down that the line, issue would have been a great. The, the issue we did would have been a great TV series. Yeah, that, well, the whole a great the TV whole, show. The book was written. I mean, think about it. It's twenty-two pages. It's almost twenty-two minutes, right? In a way, um, that it could so be an HBO, uh, you know, weekly uh, series. And you don't have to have that hanging flesh thing. All he needs is a scar there. You don't need all that crap. You know, it's, it's I get it. But half of the thing is they, they run away from that thing. The other thing was that we had some issues at one point, although, it, and I think they probably conscious of it now. He wore a, he wore the Civil War uniform, you know, of the South. And there was a reason for that in the book. And we explained that. But people, you know, now the world is, you know, everybody's arguing about everything. So. I think they don't even want to bother with the character on some level. But why don't they just have him just wear a a a, a, a coat like a frock coat? Yeah, exactly. that doesn't have to be yeah. a duster. Yeah, duster. I, thank I just you. I just think right now when half of your catalog is Batman books, 
I don't think they're looking at characters that do will do under ten or twenty thousand. Oh, they're not so, just looking at it. So it's know? only half now. Well, it, it could be more Batman related. But look, honestly, when a comic company, when a big comic company has to put three covers on every book, you know nobody's reading the comics anymore yeah. on some level. Yeah. Um, or they're trying to do what we do is, you know, they, they're going to jump into Kickstarter or they're going to hey, look. It's it. I will say there's some nice stuff here and there going on, but it's mostly money based like it's always been. They have to pay giant bills because they have a giant corporation uh, where, you know, we do our Kickstarters and basically it's just, you know, we're paying our talent and trying to make a living. But uh, I, I think it's I think the line right now is probably at its least genre oriented it's mostly all superhero yeah right now and then uh and you know and they're getting this you know all the the big companies are getting destroyed by the publishing companies you know they're putting out the younger readers versions they're putting out all this other stuff there's a lot of craziness going on so i'm just focusing on what uh, the kickstarter and taking care of our audience and trying to grow it a little bit at a time you know yeah. i'm gonna hey, be able to start printing comics soon what's that what's that Brian, I'm gonna be able. I'm gonna be able to start printing comics soon. Oh, what is your axe machine and a stapler? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm working. Uh, I'm I'm working for the. Uh, I'm working for the the newspaper here in town, and they bought all of the uh, Democrat Gazette's printer stuff, where they used to print magazines and catalogs and stuff like that. Oh, so, there you go. So yeah, full, I would love. Full I would love a magazine shape style. Uh, comic book, right, Billy? Like, a, like, a, like done like total, like high, high level, like Vogue magazine, but with comics and articles in it. Oh know? yeah, get a little bit of European influence going too. Yeah, yeah. Hey Jimmy, we had Dan uh, the deal on a few weeks ago. Okay, see you guys later. And, and we see you later, JC. Up... Hey, see you later, buddy. Buddy. See you later, Jeff. Uh, and we brought up, you know, Kickstarter him crowdfunding, and I don't think he got it. Um, I don't think he understood what it was or something. He, because, he knows what it is. I mean, oh, I, 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 he, I, I, I've been in his ear about it for a while. Because I just, we, right, Niall, we were talking in Blevins, you know, just the idea of Frank Miller doing a Kickstarter and Indiegogo, it would be huge. And like, I don't, like, why didn't they go that route? Did you have a talk? Did, did you, like, did you kind of say, Dan, you should go this way? Yes. And what, what did he say? He's <laughs> like, he, well, you know, Dan's name is Dan DeDio. Frank Miller's name is Frank Miller, right? So yeah. it's going to be whatever Frank wants, I guess. Um, until Frank could be convinced that's a better way of publishing for him. You know, it's it's tough when he, you know, he, he's had a career of every publisher pushing every other publisher out of the way to get to him, you know? Yeah. So the idea of doing a grassroots, you know, because we're grassroots with this stuff, is not, you know, it's not... Um, it's not so obvious to him how to make money from it. Um, you and I both know if we had a Frank Miller book and we were kickstarting it, <laughs> we would do pretty well with it. Um, but I think that, you know, there's safety when you have a publisher who wants to pay you your page rate ahead of time. And, um, you know, and, and uh, so there's like this, like this, he has this, you know, like, like anybody with a big name, they used to being treated the way they used to. It's why some actors don't do smaller films and experiment is because they're big names and they're used to big money and big checks and they don't take on less of things. I think Frank is one of the biggest names in the business. I think him, him, G Lee and Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane are like the three biggest we have, I think. Yeah. yeah. Right. Neil Gaiman maybe added to that. And uh, so these are a bunch of guys that, you know, that, that sort of like are used to being paid for everything they do at top rate. So, right. You know, we're, we're you and I and everybody else doing Kickstarters is like we're we're trying to stay alive and do what we want to do the way we see it being done, whether it's adult or more mature or you know we like the art to look a certain way or or we don't or we don't give a shit about writing Batman and uh, mm -hmm. and the X Men. You know, it's like something we did maybe younger or twenty years ago, but right now we have our own stories to tell. So we're just trying to survive with our own stories where those guys really still have the choice of doing anything they want. Well, like you said, like actors with big roles and, you know, right. it's almost like a clown with big shoes. Exactly. Or, or, or a, or a uh, night ape, if I may. <laughs> um, 
These are all these are all these are all the stupid shit Jimmy and I've been talking about for almost thirty years. I texted you the words night ape like a week ago. Did you see that? No. <laughs> hey, Graham Nolan. There you go. Graham, Graham, what's up? Going? What's up? You're launching uh, something tomorrow too, right? At twelve p.m. Twelve p.m. Yeah, Joe Frankenstein launches tomorrow. You and Chuck Dixon? How's old Chuck Dixon doing? I haven't seen him in a month of Sundays. You yeah, Chuck, Chuck's streaming right now. He's Does on he? uh, Heels versus Babyface. Oh, no, Real BBC. Real BBC. Oh, I think he said he was screaming right now. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, you got a lot of great creatives down there by you. You got um, Sergio's there. Oh, Vaughn yes, Coleman sir. says hi, Graham Nolan. Hey, hey Vaughn. Uh, there used to be a lot more than... Uh, and then uh, that company went out of business. Uh, what was the name of them? Uh, oh, Cross Gen. Cross Gen. Yeah, I mean, they used to be. They had a lot of guys move here, and then um, when uh, when uh, that their business practices didn't work for them, everybody moved back to where they were. Most of them moved back, I think. You know, mm -hmm. Jim Fern's yeah. still somewhere in Florida, and um, he's on the West Coast now, I think. Uh, East Coast now, I think. Graham, Graham, were you a Cross Gen? No, no, no. They uh, they tried to get me. Um, and uh, I found out some stuff, and I decided to pass. <laughs> mm. I, yeah, I, uh, I was I was speaking to to Mark. That guy Mark came. Mark. Yeah, Mark, Mark, Mark talked to me and Polito, and he basically asked me. He he took me to dinner. I think me and Debbie to to ask our advice of of how to publish. And he he had his own plan and stuff, and didn't care. And I'm like, don't go too big, too fast. You know, I said stick with maybe two titles. You know, but but he's like, no, no. I want to be the number two publisher in the country. That's what that's a cross gen. That's our goal. And I'm like, why would you want to be number two? Not number one. So, so we're number two. We're yeah, so number I, two. Yeah, yeah, we're number. So I guess uh, basically, in a nutshell, you chose poorly. Thank you. Oh, I did that for you, Grant. You got your toys. Yeah. I got my toys, Jimmy. You know, I'm all these toys for me. You know, Mark Alessi flew me down to Florida, and he, he right before that, he said, I want to do a book with you and Paul Galassi drawing it. Uh, you guys write it, and Paul draws it. And um, so Paul did some character drawings for this concept. He loved it. And I went down to Florida. I met with him, and he looked at the drawings. He goes, yeah, yeah, I love the idea. Did, can we get another artist? I don't know who this artist is. And I'm like, <laughs> it's, I said, it's Paul Galassi, the guy you actually asked me to get. That's his artwork. He's like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't know if I want, I, I don't know if I want him on a book. And I'm like, okay. I said, we're not going to do the book for, for you. I said, it's me and Paul and nothing. And then, you know, he started talking about the business to me, and he said something I'll never forget. He's like, he's like, look, because I told him, I said, you know, a lot of your books aren't selling. You should probably cancel them and put the energy of the guys into new titles. And he's like, no, no, no. The trick to publishing is to stay with the titles no matter what. Eventually they'll come around and start buying them, and I'm like, "Who told you that?" Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 never heard that in, I never heard that in my life. And I said, "That's the first way to get out, go out of business is to stick with something that's not working." Yeah. You know? And like, yeah, you see, I, I, Jimmy, I was there, Jimmy, for that dinner. I remember exactly what you said. Loser! You're a loser. Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt. You make me sick, you big baby. Baby, want a bottle? Wow. I, 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 think, I, I think that I was long. All of us here, when I say Billy, step away from the buttons. All right. I, know. <laughs> I will say Mark was a sweet guy, and he, he meant yeah. well, and he really wanted to. He told me, he said, I want to put Marvel Comics out of business. I want to beat them and put them out of business. And I'm like, I'm like, if that's your goal, I said, I would say the goal should be make some great comics and have them sell. I said, I don't know if putting somebody out of business, but his priorities were all over the place. And again, he came from a corporate computer type world where things are different than publishing. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So um, he's he a villain that thought he was going to destroy the Avengers, like basically. Uh, you know, it would have benefited him to go and make friends with Marvel and DC at some point. That would have benefited him a little bit, but, um, you know, he he, uh, he he did what he did, and there's some decent comics in there. But, you know, overall, the line, you know, mm. the line just went away. It faded away. Yeah. Yeah, that's what well, I Jen, did. Well, Jen, I got to – Billy, I, I got to take off. I got to get some day job work done now. All right, brother. All right. Good seeing you, Jimmy. Good seeing you, Graham. 
See you now. Levin. See you later, buddy. See you later, Scal. Right. I'll see you guys later. Hey, Graham, do you have a link you could share um, just for the Joe Frankenstein? You got a pre you got a pre-launch page, right? I seen it. I know you sent me the preview of it. I don't know if I could share that. It, it's uh, in no, the comments. You can't share the preview. Yeah. Do you have a you have a link? It's in the comments. Let's yeah, it's in the comments. Here, here it is. All right, let me link it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, but I want to see if I can copy that. Can you put it in the private chat? Yeah, I can. Yeah, hold okay. on. A uh, private chat? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this um the pre-launch page will actually be coming down today because I'll be collecting the um the addresses. Um and uh you know uh, they're getting the special uh, link tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so you, what you give what your pre-launch page you're able to give them a special link so they can they can um they can they could they can go on the campaign before everybody else is it is that how it works i signed no, no, up no no they'll have a special link uh to claim the sign up uh uh packages so uh, everybody who signs up a gets a uh, uh a trading card signed by me and their packages ship first all right, now I, that that's all well and good, but Debbie and I were talking about that with this campaign. How do you? So, what do you email everyone who sent you an email? Right, say you collect five hundred emails, right? Mm -hmm. Four hundred emails. You send an email to all of them saying, "Send us your address, so I could send you a card." Is that how? No, that works? no, no, no. They have to back the book. But how do you know that they're one of the first ones to do it? Because um, when they back it, they'll have the link that will. Um, uh, they'll use that link to purchase whatever that is they want. So when we look at the spreadsheet at the end, every every perk that's listed with that special link, uh, they're the ones that get shipped first, and they're the ones who shipment gets the special card. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you want to send me that? Uh, you want to put that in the private yeah, I'm, chat? I'm just trying to find it. Um, Unless you want to share it. You want to share your screen? I can't get back to your screen. <laughs> Uh, where the hell is this? Okay, you're not here. All right, let me get rid of this. No BBC, that's not it. Okay, you got to be up here somewhere. Ah, there we go. Okay. Got it. Are you, are you sharing? We. Yeah. Uh, oh, you want me to share? Uh, if you want to share, unless you want to just send me the link in the private chat. I'll, do, I'll send you the link. You can put All it right. up. Well, it's good, Graham, because mine starts at nine a.m., so it gives three-hour break. Yeah, you guys are not in. Here. Change out of the out of the uh, couch cushions. <laughs> I'm gonna hold them by their ankles and shake them. That's it. There we go. Hey, somebody, somebody said to me, they said, "It's." Uh, I had this last week. Somebody said to me, um, "You know, you used to do all these comics, and now you just do Kickstarters." And I said. I said, yeah, you should be thanking me because I only do a couple of Kickstarters a year. I'm taking a lot less money out of your pocket, trust me. Even even though the Kickstarters are a little more expensive, um, two, doing two to three uh, books for main guys a month, that, that was a lot of money to put invest in stuff. So I said, you're getting a break. Yeah, and, you, and they're buying directly from you as opposed to corporate comics that, yeah. you know, that they don't really, I don't know, it, it's become, uh, sadly, it's become, you know, abundantly clear to me that the big two don't really give too too much shits about the vast majority of their creatives. And no, it's a, good, it's a good thing the creators care. Yeah. Um, you know, because that's why we get some pretty good books once in a while is the creators are really killing themselves on some, yeah. you know. Um, but the corporation, sure, the corporation is looking at it as numbers. Nobody's sitting there going over every title with them. It's, it's, the, it's down to the creators, um, you know, Killing themselves because they're, you know, they uh, and a lot, you know, a lot of guys, younger people, have loved these characters for so long. I, I just, you can't knock the, the uh, excitement out of a kid that finally gets to draw Spider-Man for his first. Oh time. yeah, and and that that energy is always going to be there. And and you know, it's I think that's like how Todd McFarlane was when he got to draw Spider-Man. He went nuts and look how great that you know. Look, yeah. Look, so that energy is there, but I think as we get to. Um, People who have been in the business a little longer, like all of us, we look past that, or we, you know, that energy has been kind of spent because of whatever went down in, in the years of working for other people. And then when we talk about our own creators, it's back again, you know, our own creations, because it's like 
we're super excited to share what we're doing and, and using our experience to take the books that we do and make them better than what other people have published quality wise, paper wise, story wise, you know, we're, we're doing stuff that really takes uh, a lot of effort and we're picking out paper stocks. We're picking out everything mm -hmm. where company has to just use whatever paper stock they buy in advance. And that's how that kind of business works, right? They buy the rolls and rolls of a certain paper stock. And that's what you have right. where we can go out and say, you know, we want a triple thick cover stock with an embossed cover and I, you know, I go to the printer and I say, I want to make, I want to see the paper quality we got. And, um, you know, it's, it's, as you get older, it's about controlling what you're doing more. And yeah. so when you're a younger man, it's less about control. It's more about, Hey, I'm getting to do this and that's great. And I'm having fun. But as you get older, it's, it's all about control. We, we, mm -hmm. we gain the patience. We've worked off the adrenaline for the just happy to be alive, the adrenaline. <laughs> And and being and be being able to you know for me it was like oh I get to write the Punisher I get to write Harley Quinn whatever mm -hmm. and then you get older and you say okay I want to put this kind of energy but into my own thing and mm. um, and that's where the endless energy comes from as you get older is you know the Kickstarters you see the people behind the Kickstarters you see the creators when you when you pick up Joe Frankenstein you guys are all over the book whether you're talking mm -hmm. in the book. Or it's just what you're saying, you know, the, the writing, everything, the art is what we want to draw. It's what we want to write. And it creates, the Kickstarters create something that the comic companies can't create. Yes. It's a very personal, unique uh, comic that looks like nothing else because it only looks like the creators involved. So that's not going to change. And as bigger companies try to use Kickstarter, and they do, and they raise money for it and everything, but there is a there is a sort of a step away from the properties, you know. I, I more power to them, but at the same time, when you have a corporation, a big a company, doing a Kickstarter using movie stars and all that kind of stuff, there is a disconnect a little bit. Even though they raise a ton of money, there is a little bit of a disconnect from the creators to the to the um, to the customers. So for our stuff, and I'll speak for everybody here, we have a connection, a direct connection to the people buying our work and supporting us. And, and they hold us accountable. If you don't deliver a good book, they're not going to come back. Yeah, that's right. Or, or you deliver it late yeah. uh, with no good reason for it. You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, yeah. you got to know your limitations. You got to know uh, what your deadlines is, set them realistically uh, and, and beat them. If you can, then, then they're very happy, you, you know, but yeah. at the very yeah. least, make sure it goes out when you say it's going to go out, that builds trust and it builds loyalty to your brand. I had somebody who's a very well-known comic book uh, provocateur, if you will, and a um, he has a website, news website, and all. Reach out to me, um, ask me why haven't you had so this person on your show? And I'm friends with this particular creator, and I'm like, I would love to have this person on our show, but this person launched a Kickstarter six years ago and hasn't delivered on it. Mm. Do you want me to do that to that person? Yeah, they're insinuating certain things and stuff, and and. Uh, I mean, we, oh, I'm, I wasn't aware of that. I'm like, yeah. That's just yeah, we, we pay for that because I have, there's a bunch of them. It's not just one. It's a, There's a bunch of people that haven't delivered. And they always throw it in my face. Well, this guy didn't deliver. And I, and I always tell him, I'm like, look, I've done 20. I think 21 is my new one. I've done 21 of them. I There is not one person that hasn't gotten their book or hasn't been happy. I don't have that unsatisfied customer floating around on the internet. Like mm -hmm. all of them are satisfied. So I always say, well, the difference between, you know, it's a difference between going to, uh, you know, a neighborhood store that you know, and yeah. one you don't know. You go in a place you know, you know what you're going to get, and they're there to greet you, and they know you by name, and they they know what you need, and if you have a problem, you can come back to them. But if it's a if it's not a, a person like that, you know, the, the people who don't deliver, we we do pay for it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, we get hard with that, the same brush. But yeah, and we every time they do that, we lose a lot of those guys because they never want to, they never want to like, um, you know, never want to back anything again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you don't blame them. I mean, nothing for nothing. What if you back four yeah. campaigns for five, six, seven years now and you got one of them? Right. You right. know, I mean, some of these people think they're going to make, you know, they see one campaign makes $100,000 and they bank on getting that. And if they only get 30000 which is still good. Then they're right. like, oh, yeah, ah, that's not enough. 
it's, it's good. I, I, it's good if the work is paid for already. Right. But it, it, it's, I, not I, uh, good. it's not good. I love, <laughs> I love when people think we get that amount that's right on the Kickstarter. I always have, <laughs> I always have to explain a couple of things there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's printing you know, costs, there's production I, costs, there's shipping costs, and those are all, lit, you know, that's all in there. When you see that big number, that includes yeah. the shipping that was paid for. <laughs> The web the website itself the the uh, oh, yeah. credit card companies um, mm -hmm. you know yeah. and then damages and then you know people that you know, you know look if you do if you really equal it out to people like uh, you know like putting out putting the um, the hours inter interacting with the people too you know because we answer every question people ask us right they they mm -hmm. write on the campaign hey I didn't get this or you know, I'm moving next week, so can you forward it to this address? Or um, right. I got this, but the corner of one book was bent. You know, yeah. what can we do about that? Or, um, or you know, hey, or or and a lot of times uh, we did the last campaign was Amanda's art book, and I think that campaign the most I've had the most people write us back and tell us how happy they were with the book, which was really nice to get. You know, and and a. Amanda did some drawings on the inside of certain people's books and, and, you know, she put a little personal note and I'm like, you're not going to get that anywhere. Right. That's what Kickstarter is fun. The, the part of the fun. Even, the, even a little personal note on the box. Yeah. So yeah. Nice. You get a little, Hey, I always write on the box. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Can, I cannot wait to get mine. That's for sure. Yeah. Like I'm frothing at the mouth. You know, if it comes in and if it, if, cause I, I pack up the stuff with Patrick. So if it's in front of me and it's somebody I know, I always write something. But he gets some of my guys once in a while, and then he'll say, "Ah, you might want to write on this one. That's your buddy from L.A." You know, I was like, "Oh, okay." You know, um, but I miss some, and and I, I'm always like bummed about that. But but you really can go insane if you want, <laughs> you know, yeah. especially when you're packing a thousand packages or fifteen hundred packages. The last one was fifteen hundred hardcovers, Crazy. and um, yeah, and, and my my office literally had a spot where we can walk in, and that was it. I had to get each box. You know? I believe that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm Billy, with it. Where did you put all the all the omnibus? I got a which we call it on, on my driveway. I got one in pods. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. oh yeah. My neighbors are real happy with me. <laughs> yeah, well, tell them they pull their shades down once in a while. Yeah, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the voyeur across the street. Yeah. Come on. That one. Come on. So, that's all your... right. Speaking of fifteen hundred hardcovers. Graham, tell us about yeah. Joe Frankenstein, bro. Oh, uh, well, this is, you know, it was originally published by IDW back in 2015. And uh, the rights reverted to us. Uh, and uh, I wanted to put that into my Compass Comics publishing line. So we're, uh, part one is reprinting the first two issues. And it also includes the prologue, which is only in the uh, out of print hardcover. So it's going to have the prologue, it's going to have the first two issues, and it's going to have all kinds of back um, backstory and um, sketches and all that stuff. Um, then we'll set up part two, which will uh, will uh, print uh, uh, issues three and four, uh, and that's going to set up the new the next uh, level of Joe, which will be brand new stories by me and Chuck. So I need I want people to to because you know IDW didn't sell. Jack and they didn't promote Jack because you know they're not very good. <laughs> so uh, the point is, I, I want uh, I want these new readers to come in, see Joe Frankenstein, and uh, uh, get addicted to it, and then uh, follow it through the Compass Comics publishing line. So Dude, and basically, the story, the story is a love letter to uh, Universal Monster Films and, and action adventure tales. Um, it, it's about a boy who's delivering pizzas and uh, he gets attacked by a coven of vampires. Uh, his life would have ended right there. If not for this guardian angel, if you will, that uh, smashes through and saves him. And that guardian is the Frankenstein monster who's been watching over the, all the descendants of Victor Frankenstein as penance for the crimes he committed. Oh, good. and good. he's uh, his bride is after um, the blood of the monster and Joe, because uh, the monster has what she doesn't, which is the secret to eternal life. And the key to unlocking it is in Joe's blood. And uh, she doesn't want some of it. She wants all of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the monster is uh, is protecting him uh, as they're battling all these uh, creatures from the underworld. 
That's cool. So aside from these new colors, right? New covers, you you lettered, you re-lettered it, and you got a bunch of extra sketches and right, the, the you know character designs, etc. But then aside from that, the the vast majority of the book is done, right? The art story. Oh yeah, all that's all all complete. Uh, the only uh, new stuff that has to be done is um, uh, the lettering. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah. nice. And so that's, the art uh, looks great. The art looks great on it, Graham. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Thanks. I would love for this to be a, is this going to be a t-shirt? <laughs> well, I'm not, you know, this is a down and dirty campaign. This one that I'm, uh, it's, it's basically, uh, this book, the, uh, variant cover, uh, and, and um, uh, a CGG CGC signed version by Chuck and I, uh, and, and that's it. There's no tchotchkes, no, none of that. We're selling books here. Uh, to sell as many as possible. And as I said, it's it's 30 days, uh, no in demand. And so when it goes down, it goes down. And then if you want it, you're going to have to buy it on my website and it's going to be more expensive. So, you know, I want to urge everybody to you know sign up today because it's the last day. Get the extra goodies. Be the first ones to get it shipped. And uh, we'll all be happy. Don't do it. And knowing the monster kid that you are. Yeah. How much fun did you have doing this, right? Was this like a dream project for you? Like, Oh, it was. You know, when I came up with the idea for it, you know, I was like, uh, uh, well, this is interesting. The original idea, I, I wanted to do a, um, I wanted to do a monster Doc Savage. So I was going to call it Doc Frankenstein and it was going to be a real pulp adventure shit, you know. But then the Wachowski brothers trademarked the name Doc Frankenstein. Oh. And I couldn't, I couldn't use it. So I called Chuck up and I'm, I'm talking to him. I said, hey, here's what, here's the problem I got. And, uh, you know, and he says, well, just come up with another name. I said, well, I, you know, I just, I can't just call him Joe Frankenstein, you know? And, and, you know, all of a sudden there was silence and he goes, why not? That's a pretty cool name. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, all right. Yeah, that's not bad. So we that's were looking for, we were looking for something to work on together. And I said, you want to come on board? And, and so uh, uh, he did, and uh, you know we uh, we wrote this thing together. Yeah, awesome. Hey, awesome. Do you, hey Graham, Graham, do you remember when I inked you way back when? On um, Wolverine. Yeah, on Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I still have pages from that. Yeah, I love. I I actually loved inking you on that. I like. It, I was so used to guys. Just I had a lot of very pencil heavy people, and then your stuff was just clean and easy, and you know. I really enjoyed inking that. Whether you like the inking or not, you don't have to say. But I really had a good time <laughs> inking it, actually. <laughs> I did like the inking. Uh, <laughs> I did. Well, I didn't like the colors, but I did like the no, inking. No, no. We, uh, we got some cool chats here. and Somebody had said something, and no offense to uh, – Blackjack posted this going, uh, going back a few, uh, few minutes. He backed at least 2,000 uh, in campaigns last year. Thank you so much if you – Back one of our, any of ours. That's really wonderful. Um, we really appreciate that. You're the one that we're doing this for. Um, you had a problem with a with a skits campaign. Uh, they sent you a book to the wrong address. Their fault. They refuse to send you another one. That sucks. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, that, that's not really good customer should, service. Yeah. You know, I mean, if they if they admitted that they sent it to the wrong place, they should <laughs> send you another book. I mean, you know, that's you know, that's on them. Yep. If you yep. moved. If you moved, that's on you. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. then we got everybody. We got uh, we got another friend of the show here, Jimmy Reyes. What's up, Jimmy? Jimmy Reyes. Wow, man, look at this. You got hey, hey. Jimmy. I don't want you to take it personally, but I have a two o'clock call. I got to run off. I feel oh. so bad. Like, I I also know. they they Girl. called in a backup Jimmy. So I, yeah. I, I yeah. like real quick, Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, you got a uh, uh, from the art of Roy. Jimmy, love the pro. Anything new coming up? Any you guys? Think yeah, we're working. We're, we're working on a, a follow up. The 21 years later, exactly what happens 21 years later. We did a tease of it in one of the uh, image anniversary books. Yeah. Um, just a tease of the first six pages of Amanda Drew, but we're working on a project for uh, another one shot that we're trying going to try to just uh, get, uh, you know, get people talking about again or complaining about like the original one. No, it's a uh, brilliant concept. It really is. Everyone loves the pro. Uh, it. We call that the drunken concept. We were all in a bar. And I think <laughs> man, one of the superheroes was a prostitute, and then she drew it. <laughs> you know? Well, that's how the Declaration of Independence came about. She drew, it, she drew it on a napkin, and then we all started laughing, and we 
started talking about, well, this would happen and then that would happen. And then we literally got home and Garth called up and said, yeah, I got an idea for a book. If I write it, you'll draw, you guys will do the art. They're like, yeah, let's do it. And uh, that's how that came out. And, uh, you know, I think we got the extra push from Jim Stranko because he uh, he got upset at the idea of it. Oh, and, really? <laughs> yeah. and, he, and he complained. He called us the terrorists of comics, which we were like, wait a minute. How, why are we terrorists? Because we're, we're right that goofy thing. But anyway, Jim took it. Jim thought somebody said the book was about terrorism. And uh, whatever it was, it made a big stink and the sales went up <laughs> initially. The, or the orders came in higher because Jim was saying that it's a book. Nobody should be reading this book or whatever. And it kind of worked in our favor. So that's why at the end of the pro, the last page says this book is dedicated to Jim Stranko because he got <laughs> <laughs> it's in there. So, uh, you know. That's anyway, great. listen, guys, I got a 2 o'clock call. Thank you so much, Billy. Good seeing you. Good seeing you, good seeing you Jay. Good seeing you. Hey, you good luck tomorrow. Good morning. Good luck. When you're done, go over to Graham and back his at noon. It's at 9 a.m. in the noon. And then we'll get you broke by the end of the day, everyone. <laughs> Atta boy. Yay. Yay. Good luck tomorrow, Jimmy. Right, take care, See you later, Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, everybody, please go to Painkiller Jane, uh, Beautiful Killers. Uh, it's on uh, Kickstarter. Here's a pre. The link is in here. Thank you very much, a Eric, for posting that. Great book. Great people. Jimmy and Amanda. Uh, you can't go wrong with people like that. Not unlike uh, Mr. Graham Nolan right here, <laughs> y'all. Joe Frankenstein. He goes live tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Graham, you going to have a, any kind of a live stream? You gonna oh, yeah. You doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chuck and I are gonna go live, um, and I'll put uh, I'll put the link in the bros, and uh, you know we'll we'll have a little uh, launch party. I think. Excellent, excellent. What are you gonna be? Are you gonna be eating lunch? You're gonna eat lunch before, after? What are you gonna do? Can we? No, eat? I'll have I'll skip lunch because I gotta I, I gotta keep I gotta keep sharp. That's true. You don't want to be bloated with all that pasta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pasta. Come on. Speaking of, of bloating, Jimmy, how you doing? <laughs> Whew, that time of the month again, Billy. How did you know? Uh. <laughs> Dragon Rage. Jimmy, you got a link to your campaign if you want to put it in the private chat or share your screen. We'll do it. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. I got my my hero shot, guys. Look at this. I, I, yeah, it's good. Blood yeah, I was there. about to say, the last couple of streams you've been on, your, uh, your camera has been on point, like completely. Like, I don't know. The lighting's been good. It's been great. Well, I wouldn't say it's my camera or my lighting, <laughs> Blevins. I think it's from the Blevins Media Center. Is that what you're getting at there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Media Center. I did send a lot of stuff, but I mean, it. Look, like I could just send you the golf clubs. You have to swing. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like the t just the tools. It's how you use them. Right, so you're but saying you're I caddying your your caddy for him? <laughs> yeah. When I met when I when we started the Pop XP four years ago, next month we're now approaching 700 shows. Wow! wow. How crazy is that? The vast yeah. majority of them helping independent creators, talking up their campaigns and all. Yeah. Um, but uh, I didn't know anything. So B Lev's like. So he's like, well, what do you want? I said, well, I said, now, so Brian knows all this stuff. So Scala sent me a list of what I got to do, what I have to get. So I said to Blevins, I said, uh, he's like, well, send me that list. Let me, I'm like, well, I don't know what any of this is. Brian, Niall sent me a list of this stuff. I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is. And Brian says, well, send it to me. Hmm. And I'll tell you which ones you get. I'm like, okay. So I don't hear back from him, right? He doesn't get back to me. Next thing I know, the next day via Amazon, I get like five, 10 boxes. Of stuff he bought me everything on the list that's right so thank wow. you Brian, for that. yeah I, I definitely wanted well i mean i had spent years streaming as well though you know like i was a professional gamer like i spent years doing that stuff so i i had a lot of stuff already you know i had a I had a bunch of it sitting around already so yeah it was a situation where you know kind of skewing the the deal i was able to buy something and send it off and then just take mine back and and return it as though I bought it from the store. I know that sounds <laughs> kind of shady, but uh, you know it saves saves all the saves all the shipping charges basically, and they still yeah. get their money. But uh, but yeah, it was a it was really good times. Uh, I mean, being on the Pop XP has been great. Like I've gotten to gotten to nerd out on more than one occasion. I mean, like shoot, I'm sitting here. Graham Nolan's on the screen. What's up, Graham? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, you say snob, but you have no idea how awesome you are. But uh, yeah, it's 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 no, good. no, uh, I I know exactly how awesome. You are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I have to. Um, yeah, I mean, I have to go. I, like I said, I got a job working at the newspaper. Yeah. I'm doing all their doing all their digital content and their digital media and the social media stuff. It just happened. Uh, so I'm I've been on here way too long, but uh, it's it's awesome. Billy, you know, Gate Crashers is going to be incredible. Graham, as always, it's great to see you. Jimmy, uh, this is my first time being on with you, but man, good luck with your Indiegogo. Go Go. And uh, oh, yeah. thank you, appreciate that. Yeah, you guys, you guys have an awesome day. Okay. All right, talk to you later, buddy. Have Peace. a good one. Yeah, yep. thank you. Bye. Yep. Graham, I Bye. know you're busy too, and Jimmy, the same. You know, we're all busy. Um, so gonna have a little fun for a little while longer. Um, Graham, when you stream tomorrow, uh, is it Chuck going to be on the stream with you, a live stream? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna you're gonna put it out on the YouTube. You're gonna do Facebook Live as well, or? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, the usual, so, you know, the usual how I usually stream. It'll be on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, Chuck will be on. Uh, we'll show some pages. We'll talk about the creation of it. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully, everybody will uh, will, will watch and and they'll go to the uh, uh, Indiegogo site and, and back the project. Excellent. That bastard Andy Smith isn't going to be on the show stream, is he? <laughs> Not if I can help it. Thank you. <laughs> Dude, what's the CGCs you got back there, real quick? Oh, you got uh, some badass books here. What oh, are those? Uh, there's the original Monster Island. Ooh. Oh, from 1994. Now, where did you? What, now, Graham, did you have that in your in a short box or something? That, like, where did you? How did you get the original Monster Island slabbed? Was was that in your personal collection and you sent it in? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Same thing with Alien Alamo. Hmm. Got that one slabbed, and then I got. Uh, you just went home. You got it at two o'clock. The Chanu. Chanu, nice. Say hello, honey. She's over uh, there. Deb. So Jimmy Jimmy Reyes is on too, honey. Hi everybody. Now now Graham. Deb. Oh, what's he got? He has something else there. Yeah. He's gonna need a cover. So you had Compass Comics back in the early nineties? Yeah. Now, uh, 1998, I started it. Uh, for Monster Island. Then there's the variant of the Chinoo. Nice. And this one is really cool because this was, uh, this one is the uh, retailer version of Monster Island. Oh. It was a sketch I cover, and you could only get it if you ordered 10 copies of the other one. So retailers had to order 10 copies to get one of these. Is uh, that an IDW book? No, it's Compass Comics. Oh, com oh, so you, so you, okay. So when did you publish this through Diamond, though, or did you sell directly to the retailers from your, from the first uh, Indiegogo? How did they get that book? The retailers? Yeah, is is that a retail or the fans buy it? How no, this is this is the retailer book that that retailers could, could only retailers could get if they ordered ten copies of the original. Okay, uh, and then and then they could sell it for uh, you know whatever price they feel they could get. Um, but this this was done in 1998. So yeah, this oh, one wow. hey, didn't they call them uh, incentive covers back in the yes. 90s? Or? Yes, exactly, Jimmy. And you still got a nine a nine point eight on that bad boy being yeah like, I know five years old almost wow. <laughs> yeah the original one came up as a nine four wow so wow. I I looked at uh, if there's a uh, QR code back here if you scan the QR code it'll take you to. Um, the CGC site with the original um, uh, graders notes. And the reason I got a 9.4 on there is that uh, there's slight rust on the inside um, uh, Staple. staples. Wow. Yeah. So that knocked it for it to a nine, four. Too bad. Oh, you didn't know that you could take a razor blade and maybe cleaned it off. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the, 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 it was in a box. Uh, they were, I had boxes of these originals left over. They've been in my basement 30 years. Yeah. So there's the moisture um, and stuff like that. So, you know, I had to yeah. go through and find the best looking ones. And, uh, you know, I did, I saw the outside had no rust on it, you know, but it must've had a little bit of rust on the inside. Damn. Damn it. Damn. Could have had that 9.8, you know, Those I'm sure they, were. did they tell you how much they knocked it down or what it could have been without the rust? It would have been a 9.8. A 9.8? Wow. Yeah. And I don't think they, a, a 10 would a be 10. unheard of. You know? Yeah. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen one. 
<laughs> You're the only 10 I know, Graham Nolan. <laughs> Ding. Nice. Uh, Billy, when you did your when you did your uh, superhero shot, did you realize you have the Spitfire right above your head? I don't, don't have a Spitfire right? above my head. What I have is a Jap Zero above my head right oh, now. Oh, is and that what it is? The red circles? Oh. Yeah, yeah. See that? And yeah, then, I see it. The, the rising what, sun. What, what the Zero is afraid of is right over here. The Corsair. Yeah, look at that bad boy. Oh. Yeah, for you, Corsair. Yeah, and then right over. Oh, did I lose it? Uh, what did I do? I oh, think no, I, I saw one in front of the. Uh, then I got. Oh, I got a uh, up there is a uh, is a Grumman. That I got a Japanese Raiden up there. Whoop! The, and you know, the, here's wow. the interesting thing about these these models. Shit! I'm trying to these models. Shit! <laughs> yeah. Said. Hang on, I gotta. <laughs> it's it's everything's backwards, right? Oh yeah. So then, yeah there's there's a Grumman sense. duck, and then over there's a Japanese Radon Raidan fighter right there. Oh, oh, yeah. oh so, nice. These were like Joe Casada's dad made these and when joe's dad passed away joe gave them to me because i would talk to his father about model building no wow. shit. his father was a great modeler and then oh, i have wow. him here look at this bad boy i got that they look airbrushed did, did he air, I got, oh yeah he did all that mr casada look at wow. there's my uh oh I love that one so that's cool there you go anyway wow. but uh yeah, yeah so that, that's I, so this is my pacific theater wing and then back there is my European World War II theater wing. And then that leads into the Battle of Britain wing on the other side. Have, have you been to the World War II Museum in New Orleans yet? No, I have not. Not yet. Dude, you got to go. I know. I it's know. It's so freaking amazing. I mean, I could have spent probably two days there, but I, I had I had to rush through it. I, I only got like two hours in there. But you could spend two days very easily. It is it is so amazing. Yeah. I, I, I've been to – I've been to – um. Uh, the the RAF museum in 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 outside of London at Hendon, and I've been to Normandy. I've been to uh, I've you know a bunch of other American Air Power Museum by here by me, um, Kalamazoo that has the Spruce Goose. I think that was in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where we were. Unless mm. that was in Seattle, I don't remember. I saw the Spruce Goose. We got to walk through that. That was insane. Oh. Um, but I've never been to the World War II Museum, and I've never been to. Uh, the Smithsonian, either. I don't I mean, know. Washington, D.C. I, I live very close to an Air Force base, but it's no longer as, as active as it was. But it was a uh, Kelly Air Force Base. I don't know if you or Lackland. <clears throat> and oh, yeah, Lackland. To, mm -hmm. We used yeah. to have those jets and everything just like flying over. We could see them or we'd go to the air shows. And it was it was amazing growing well, up. Well, that's interesting that. because tonight on the professionals, we're going to be talking about conspiracy theories. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of right. Air Force pilots have been calling in some some crazy stuff. That's right. But to see that we're going to talk about because there's only one conspiracy theory apparently that Graham Nolan believes in, and we're going to hear about that tonight. Yes. Is it, is it involve a triangle? Can't tell. I don't know. Can't, <laughs> he's, he's, he'll surprise us with it. All right. I'm going to surprise you, but when you hear it, you're going to be like. Yeah. Okay. Really? <laughs> yeah. You're gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> that, that's been proven. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like it. that's common knowledge. We all know that now. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna have to see about that bad boy. We're gonna yeah, have to see. Jimmy Reyes, you sent me. You put me the, in your private chat. Yeah. Put it in private. Yeah. Open right, the private let's chat. Do that real quick, and then we'll head out. I'm gonna go go to lunch and come back, and I'll draw this. I might even go live again. I don't know. I gotta. I think what I did was, if you see. I do my underdrawing real quick, and the under this is my oh. underdrawing. So it's all this is what I did on the Kings last night, actually. So if you see it, a lot of the work is done here. I don't know if you guys draw like this. You got you use the, the computer too, though, right, Nile? A uh, uh, Graham? Uh, I used to use the light box back yeah. in the old days, but uh, yeah, I I do all my stuff on the iPad now. Yeah, I got and and let me ask you now, Jimmy. Do you draw on the iPad? Uh, he's a Wacom Cintiq. Is that the same? It's the same thing, it, right? It's just a big tablet. It's yeah. giant. It's about this big. It's right in front of me. I have a like this. I can actually move it. Hard? Did, did you guys find it hard to convert from drawing a, on paper to that? I mean, I find it terrifying. Form. It's not the paper that's that's terrifying. It's it's the learning curve of the program you have to use. Yeah, yeah. Uh, How long did it take you to learn it? Graham, like I mean, I mean, obviously you, you're 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 a whiz at it now. Well, I use long? I use Procreate, which is very uh, uh, 
intuitive. Um, but, you know, a lot of people that use the Cintiq use that uh, um, sketch. Uh, Clip Studio as well. Uh, ske- yeah, Clip Studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I try, I had that on my computer and uh, I can't figure it out, you know, uh, how to use it on my computer. But maybe if I actually had a, a, a tablet, you know, that I could use it on. But to use Clip Studio on a tablet, it's a, um, you can get it free for the computer, but on the tablet, it costs you a subscription. Mm. And I'm afraid because I've, what I've gone through on the computer with it, that if I get it, I'm going to be like, fuck this. <laughs> this is, this is too, then, too much of a learning curve, you know? It'll yeah. slow down your workflow. I mean, you're yeah, used exactly. to getting yeah. something done within yeah. four hours and then next thing I you know, the whole day. I sit down with somebody, you know, yeah. like, and, and say, hey, how do I do this, you know, or. Or what's, you know, what file do I do? You know, all that kind of stuff, you know. Mm. But one day. Yeah, when you have the time, right? Yeah, sure. When I, when I make yeah. my first millions and I'm laughing all the way to the bank, uh, <laughs> then. <laughs> oh, hey, Billy, today is National Cigar Day. Shut up. We got to smoke a cigar tonight. Oh, know, you can't, right? I You're can't, not I to, can't in smoke in here. Yeah. You might have to smoke a cigar, even a little one. I'm going to Dallas this weekend. It's supposed to be warmer there, so uh, I'm going to yeah. do my uh, uh, my uh, Hawaiian shirt and cigar fest there. Mm. Well, I think we remember the last time last time a leftist Yankee went down to Dallas. What happened to him? <laughs> no, you're not a leftist. I was like, whoa, are, wait, Catholic, are you Catholic, Graham? Yes. That's what we said. Remember the last time a Catholic Yankee went down to Dallas? <laughs> you, you can go what say hi to him. for him. Yeah, maybe I ought to stay. You can go say hi to Eric July. He's in yeah. Dallas. Is he? Yeah, he's uh, right outside Dallas. Yeah. Oh, dude, have okay. you been on his show, Graham? Haven't you been on Eric's show? You yeah. should, you should see what he's doing for dinner one night or something. Yeah, I should, uh, I'll reach out to him. I don't know. I'm going to be in town. Is there a con down there? Yeah. Which show is that? Uh, Retro Expo. Retro Expo. Is uh, Mike Golden going down? No, Mike's. I, I didn't see Mike on the guest list. Uh, Renee will be there though. Oh, give give her my love. T- tell yeah. her I said, hey, Texarkana. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, uh, some of the guys from um, um, uh, uh, Friday Night Tights are going to be there, I think. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think Gary's going to be there and um, uh, an- another guy that was on the show. Um, so maybe they'll they'll come out for cigars. Yeah, Isn't uh, Gary from was- San Francisco or something? He's from California, right? Uh, Gary lives in Texas. Gary's in Texas? Yeah. Wow. Dude, where in Texas are you? Uh, I'm in you Nor know, Bernie in San Antonio. I'm just right between. I'm closer to oh, San yeah, Antonio. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. Hill right in the hill country. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we we hunt out here. We got, I mean, we got venison just loose. You know, bucks just like, yeah. like I've said, they hit my wife's car. The buck ran into it. I mean, these guys get huge. You got them axis deer down there too, right? I actually don't really know anything about deer, but I have oh. family that go and they hunt. You know, they go and they hunt these deers and they make deer jerky out of it. So uh, that's all. I just know how they taste. I don't know what their name. Yeah, you gotta have more jerky. Like I said, Graham. Depending yeah. on how much I have left, I'm gonna bring you some nice. I'll save you some nice back straps. For um, I'm I'm not bringing a a, a cooler and having to worry no? about icing that thing up. And, and you know, <laughs> all right, it's June. You know, I it's mean, ju- Billy, it's June. For yeah, God. yeah, it's gonna melt in my truck, and I'll have stinky deer meat rotting in there. What bleeding out all over, <laughs> ruining my good cigar and bourbon smell. <laughs> you smoke cigars in the truck? Ever uh, in the bed of the truck? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a two bed Jimmy's uh, way down south. I'm yeah, looking, I'm looking I'm, I'm at, Joe. Uh, oh yeah, you're you're pretty far south of uh, Dallas, right, Jimmy? I'm two hours away. I'm not. I'm two not hours. really. Not really all that far. I've, okay. Yeah. No, actually, Dallas. I think it's about four hours. Four. Oh, okay. Back. Yeah. Is it is the show like in Fort Worth or is it like south or north of Dallas? Do you know? Uh let me see where it says. I got the website here. It's in. Uh... Graham's, Gra- Graham's just going. He's not really sure where, but he's just going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Irving, pretty much how. Texas. Well, the weather's great right now uh, in Texas. You know, we're having, don't get fooled. You're going to come out here and go, oh my God, this feels like beautiful weather. No, Texas is hot, really hot. But I'll take it. We're we're yeah. having good weather right now. Oh, it, it's in Allen, Texas. Oh, okay. It, uh, North, North Dallas area. 
So it's, it's in the sad. Dallas, the greater Dallas Fort Worth area. Fort Worth area, yeah. Okay. Ooh, you know what's in Fort Worth? The John Wayne Stockyards. What's oh. that? It's uh they got this John Wayne exhibit that the Wayne family has set up uh with like all his costumes and guns and hats and shit. And oh wow. Uh, yeah. That's in Fort Worth. I wonder how far I'm gonna be. Graham, how uh when are you leaving for the show? Friday. And the show's a Saturday, Sunday show? Yeah. Do you come back Sunday? I mean Monday? Monday, yeah. Uh and then I got a show in Ohio that that you know three four days later. Uh, oh, geez, really? Yeah, but I can drive to that one. Oh, how yeah. how how long is your drive? Uh, four hours, I think. Oh, that's not bad then. Yeah, maybe five. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think my shows. The only shows I'm flying to is Heroes and San Diego this year. Thank mm -hmm. God. I'm supposed to be in Miami, which we're really bummed uh, bummed out about. Uh, uh, in March, but Matthew's got a tournament, a wrestling tournament. So he's got a lot of tournaments this spring. Um, and, uh, you know, this is next year's his last year. So he wants to be a state champion. So let's, wow. he's, he's got to go for it. Is he wrestling? Or yeah, he wrestles. Yep. Yep. So okay. that's his, that's his goal. So he's going to be hitting a ton of tournaments and he's just going to um, be training. So we're real proud of him. So it was for my, my family growing up. My father was a boxer. All my brothers, boxers. I was a boxer. And it was just tournament, 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 fight, fight, fight my entire life, you know? And uh, <laughs> oh, we got somebody here. Oh, oh, hang on. We got another guest. And I'm going to go right into your dragon rage. Graham, if yeah. you have to leave, please don't feel obligated that you got to stick around. Yeah, so, I, I am going to. I am going to bounce, bud. Uh, I, I got some stuff I got to set up for tomorrow's show. So tag team. Uh, but hey, hey, Dan. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I wanted to come in and support you, Billy, and, and say you. hey to the gang and, uh, wish you best of luck on, uh, on, yeah. on your, uh, campaigns. Thanks. And, you too. Uh, we got Joe Frankenstein. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, big, big, tomorrow. big day yeah. tomorrow. Should be fun. So everybody, hey, chat, great seeing y'all. Uh, have a, have a good one and, uh, we'll see you guys later. Yeah. You got it, Graham. Thanks yeah. a lot, buddy. Thanks. Everybody Thank tomorrow, you. Joe Frankenstein, 12 PM Eastern time. That's Launch. it on my channel. On Graham's, Graham's channel. Yep. All right, buddy. I'll see you later on the bro. Right. See you guys. Good night. We'll see you. Good day. Good day, mate. Good day. I Dan sure hope he... Effin Lawless. What is up, <laughs> homie? Not much. Not much, man. <clears throat> Just floating around these campaigns and having fun, man. Float like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. Not unlike our boxer right here, man. <laughs> Jimmy Reyes. Jimmy, talk to us about Dragon Rage. Yeah, Dragon Rage is a... Uh, oh. Earlier, I know Jimmy Palmiotti was talking. I mean, uh, I don't know if you guys caught it earlier today. Chuck Dixon was on. Uh, he was getting interviewed over there at Gary's channel, uh, I think. And they were, he was talking about how, you know, like uh, uh, characters just need, that are badass need to be badass. Like, that's all they need to be, you know, like the Punisher. So that's what this is, man. Th these are uh, manly men, manly male characters. The women are sexy, you know. They're, they're not afraid to be sexy. The, the men are manly. Uh, we got dragons in it. We got people that have the ability to capture the rage of a dragon. And if you had the power of a dragon, like what would it, what would it be like? You know. And so I have to. You know, freaking cool! I'll tell you that, buddy. Yeah, these guys would be badass. You know. And so, and that's what so it Jimmy, in the, 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 this fantasy made written from created for guys, the women aren't in control. Yeah. <laughs> I think Jimmy's original tagline was dragon rage, where the men are men, women are women, and the sissies keep their funny business to themselves. That's right, man. That's right. No lattes in dragon rage. No lattes. <laughs> I tell you, All if right, I see, man, if I see one video, more bro. movie, if I see one more movie or story where this, you know, 90 pound girl is throwing around 250 pound oh, guys, yes. it's like, that's enough of that. You know, okay, we got female power. Got it, guys. Shit. Dude, I what you would call I I my my whole career is based on a female character, and she's gotten her ass kicked all the time. Yeah, but it's ninja you know I mean? stuff. It's more it's more like you know there's there's something to it, you know. Yeah, I just love that where you get this like like you said, a hundred and two pound, five foot girl punching a guy, um, you know, a six foot four man in the face, and him falling down. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> come on, you know what I mean, like. I mean, it's not like like she's you know stabbed him. You know what I mean with a with a with a, a blade or something. Yeah, like <laughs> fast. Tough, they can be fast. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. But you get little guys like me. Yeah, and I'm beating up. You know. Uh, you know. Uh, geez, the Hulk or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so let's look at this. First of all, I'm digging what I, I'm digging this already. Thanks. First of all, all right, how fucking badass is that? Sorry, my last bastard. My last name in English means kings. King. So I went with King of the King. Jungle for it's all badass, but, you know, it's kings. Yeah, it's all <laughs> superior. Superior. Yeah. We got a boy, of course, Marcus, a boy, Hell, Dan Lawless. Where EVS at? I don't know. He liked he liked the thing. I put the invite to him and everybody else. But Ethan's been working. Him, John, Shane, uh, yeah. Meanie, man, y'all work some crazy hours. You, yeah, you those guys. You know, I, I'm on a normal schedule right now, but I, I used to, you know, usually I'm on a late night schedule, and these guys are up all night. Yeah, like, I, what are they I doing saw now? that because you, you in the message in in the in the chat, you did the same thing. Like, yeah, I'm on a normal schedule, like. Yeah. You know, John's like, you know, streaming, and it's like 1:42 in the morning. Yeah, right. I'm like, yeah. Like Rini, Rini posted a link at that time, you know. Yeah, Rini posted now, a link that, at I'm kind of curious, hour. So, uh, is that you know helpful to the campaigns? I, I mean, there seems like there's a lot of people watching, so I'm, I'm kind of curious about that translation because you'd think the prime time would be, you know, I don't know, eight, nine, ten, something like that. Yeah, but is it not? I mean, is, is it is it is there a lot of a lot of audience after hours, like one in the morning? Foreign like, viewers. Mostly. I know. We should ask our boy Vaughn Coleman. See what he thinks. He's a he doesn't sleep. Vaughn doesn't sleep. We'll see what time he works. Wow. Yeah, I, I got you... kids, you know. I got I got you mm -hmm. know, and I like I I like working nine to five or nine to nine. <laughs> it's never nine to five. Yeah. But you know, I like get up early and doing my you know checking you know having my tea and yeah. then having a uh, maybe drop my son off at school. During the week, he go, he's got to be at school like 7.30. So I drop him off at school because we don't have buses here, even though we're paying the highest fucking property taxes in the country. Oh, God. Um, and, uh, and then I'll go to the gym maybe, you know, or I'll just start doing my emails all in the morning, you know, or send mm -hmm. press releases out or whatever, updates for the campaigns. And then, you know, eat some lunch or – and then maybe around 2 o'clock hit the gym if I don't go in the morning, break it up a little bit because I don't know about you guys – there are some days the only time I go outside is to take my son to school, drive mm -hmm. to and from the gym, or take the garbage pails out. Like, I don't hey, there, out. There's been times I like I didn't leave the house for days. Like, yeah. like, a, like a prisoner, you know, you just get you get a little time in the yard, you know, a few minutes. <laughs> Pretty much. No. I try no, I try to walk every day, you know, at, at least you yeah. know, for exercise. I mean, just you got to get outside. You got to pound the pavement. You got to really, yes, just you know, feel that fresh air and and, yeah. and that sort of thing. Because you can lose, you know, you can lose perspective and that sort of thing. Yeah. My Dan, where, do you, Dan, where do you live? I'm in Michigan. Okay, yeah, so it's cold up there by you too. Yeah, you know, yeah. Although this winter has been pretty mild. That's like, I mean, it's really weird. Like is forty it? degree weather in, in February. Is it strange. New York uh, bracing for a, a snowstorm? A we snow? had a storm this... last night, and but we got. Uh, I'm on the South Shore mm. of Long Island. I'm right near the water. The water's like just right down that way, um, down a block, and uh, we get the 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 ocean. We don't get as much snow. It's it, we're like the opposite of Graham Nolan getting the lake effect snow up in yeah. Buffalo where he is. Because for some reason, it, it, it we don't get the snow in the winter, and then it kind of cools us off in the summer. But we had a, a, supposed to be a storm last night, and we only got about two inches, and now it's been freezing rain all day. Oh, wow. It's like 34 degrees and just wow. raining, and it's just disgusting. That was <laughs> shut down Texas. You know, to kind of just like, that's your bones, you know? That yeah. Part, like, you're yeah. just like, oh, you're achy, and oh, you're yeah, like, oh. Yeah. Wow. We lost you power last week from an ice storm. Oh wow! So uh, just for a day or so, but uh, you know, I got a generator and all that. What That's part the funny of thing is, you, you know, in the at? like where Michigan? I'm right north of Detroit. Oh, I mean, like John Neely? Well, can we not like Novi? No, <laughs> I don't know what to say. What Isn't time. Novi north of Detroit? <laughs> it's a little bit west. Oh, well, so. Novi's west of Detroit. Yeah, we we have cousins in uh, Gross Point Farms. Well, that's that's where I grew up, Gross Point Woods, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. The, yeah. What year did you graduate high school? Eighty-three. Eighty-three? Eighty-three. See, my my cousin graduated eighty-four. So you wouldn't know name? uh uh Michelle Lukasavich, would you? Hmm. I don't know. She's she's it's all she's not rich. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a, the rich area. She took they took us to the rich area near Mac, right? You go down Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? 
Well, Jefferson, Jefferson is, you know, the lakefront property is really, really wealthy. Yeah. Oh, Je Jefferson. Is it, is Jefferson near Mac? I just remember it, it's, Mac. It's, it's the, it's the one that, that goes along the, the, the lake front. How do you, how do you say, how do you say Mac? Mac. Do you say Mac? Mac. We, we're, we're not so Mac. We're, it's like, oh, your mom? Mac. Mac. My mom is great. Just throwing a couple of A's in that Mac. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember Billy, like years ago, you like you said, yeah, I'm going to visit someone in, in Gross Point Farms. And I'm like, you're, you said I'm going to the tap room. I'm like, I went to the tap room all no, the time. I, no, the rustics. My cousin. Oh, the rustics. The rustics bar. The, there's two of them. The yeah, woods, though, right? That's. I think that's in the woods. The rustics. Uh, I think it's Gross Point Woods. Yeah, it's probably not woods. Yeah. No. No. Woods Great is woods is, woods is the northernmost part. The uh, the poorer part. <laughs> No. Where the middle class people live. Well, they are middle class. They are, you know, they're not rich at yeah. all. They don't live like where the lakes, the lake shore. Yeah. They're not like Gross yeah. Point Blank, Gross Point. Well, there's a lot of Gross Points. You have Gross Point Farms, a city, uh, uh, shores, uh, woods, and then just Gross Point. And, okay. Uh, they live near, my co one cousin lives near the high school because we walked to the high school. Just Gross Point South, probably. Okay. So, oh, okay. Okay. Nice neighborhood, real nice neighborhood. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's really wealthy. Yeah. Yeah, and she so. told. Well, they're not really wealthy. They're, they're you know they're middle class, but they tell us about Halloween. So I guess from the poorer areas of Gross Point or the or Detroit, and they drop all their kids off in their neighborhoods. And they just yeah. And <laughs> yeah, they do that. And here they too, leave yeah. and they're like, "What just happened?" Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, where I'm at, where I'm at, it's it's a little off the, the Woodward Corridor, but the cor Woodward Corridor, they yeah, they come up and. Uh, and just get bombarded with kids. It's a yeah, lot of fun. My, I mean, yeah, my parents. We don't, I wish a, we got more kids here where I'm at. So. My parents are in, in a really nice neighborhood, and it's like a, a movie. You get out there, and there's just families walking up and down, and they're giving out just amazing stuff for Halloween, you know, for these kids, and they're putting on shows in the front yard. So everybody, including myself, I didn't live in my parents' neighborhood once when I had kids. So we drive to their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and pretty much, you know, it was, it, it, we, they get bombarded with about 3,000 wow. people, kids, and families Holy just coming smokes. up and down their, their blocks. Yeah. yeah I've got, I had I got a go town on, like on... that, but that, that does, that goes all out. There's one street in uh, Monroe, um, uh, I forget what's um, up north a little bit. And man, it just, it, it, you know, just, it's a massive crowd of people because everybody's yeah. doing the display of different themes and stuff like that. It's really cool. My house is actually pretty good when at, at Halloween, but yeah. What do you do? You got a picture of it? Uh, I do. <laughs> I show my that? house online. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to post it. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to talk to yourself. Don't, don't. Yeah, do we. That. Yeah, we do. We do that too. Our house is an old Victorian, so we light it up with purple lights, uh -huh. purple oh, wow. and orange lights, cool. like on the porch yeah. is all orange and stuff. And I yeah. got my oh. big ghosts and stuff, and and uh, we we do that too. We I had to go back and get candy. I, I had like five. I had to go get. Five, I think I bought five extra bags of candy for the Damn. kids. It, my like my neighbors are awesome across the street. Wow. For, you know we've been here twenty five years, and so have they. And she gives out full size Snicker bars. Yeah, I used to do that. Yeah. Like full yeah. go to size, Co man. Like like you know. So I still go there every year. I I come by at like three o'clock, four o'clock. I'm like ding dong. It's like I'm like trick or treat. <laughs> I want my candy yeah. bar. It's like my parents' neighborhood. They all the little community gets together to talk about what they're going to bring. Really, what it is is they're just all trying to get inside information and who's going to bring what, so they can outdo each other. Wow, that's all that's it awesome. is. Just yeah, they're so competitive. Yeah. These old ladies, man. It's well, you, you know, one of my kids is a birthday close to Halloween, so uh, we uh, would do Halloween birthday parties, theme birthday parties. Everyone gets dressed up, and so yeah. I decked out the house, and that's just kind of like you know, mold. That just kind of turned into a just a halloween you know decorated house you know so i've been it's kind of kid friendly though actually i love that idea i've been wanting to have a halloween party costume party since i moved here and i haven't had one yeah oh. and, I, and i've been trying to get my wife to dress as cleopatra mm -hmm. or morticia adams oh my gosh it's so <laughs> funny because awesome. yeah. my wife has dressed as cleopatra and morticia adams did she have those <laughs> costumes left because we have to buy the cot do you have like in the in the in the up in the attic you had an old box of costumes and send it to me yeah they're, they're in look, the basement somewhere yeah look, look honey you didn't have to buy it here just yeah. put it on yeah <laughs> it's yeah. June. just try it on i just wanted to see you know near the alamo and here in texas we there actually are a lot of victorian style homes it's called the the, the king williams area Mm -hmm. And they are all um, protected by by the city, so you can't like remodel. You can't change your 
pretty much if you buy a house there, you can't really change anything on it. Yeah. Uh, without their permission, but they're amazing homes. These, these, uh, and they're on the, on the river and they are beautiful, beautiful Victorian homes there. Yeah. I love Texas. I got to tell you. And again, I, I have friends in Fredericksburg and, oh, just yeah. beautiful. I, I met um, friends with the guy who owns uh, the Lookenbach bar. His family owns it. His grandfather was Hondo, who, uh, Wow. Willie Nelson sang about in one of his songs. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, let's get back to the campaign. I, but yeah, I digress, I everyone. Barely got through right, this. Dan, <laughs> Dan, you're in Nassau? Hey, Dan, let, let us know if you're going to go uh, to the Garden State Comic Fest. We're all going to have a good time. Uh, it's at the at Morristown, New Jersey. There's a couple of great hotels there with suites. You know, I don't know, with embassy suites or something like that. And uh, we're going to be hanging out that Saturday night. So uh, we'd love to see you guys. All right, let's watch your campaign. I apologize, Jimmy, for no, no problem. Reyes means dragon. I'm, I'm just here to have Jimmy? a good time. No, Reyes means kings. Kings. Okay. Yeah. Damn, that's awesome. Damn, that's so awesome. Nice. I'm like jealous. <laughs> Dragali, the true dragon masters, humans with the rare ability to capture the rage of the dragons, wielding their powers as their own. Shut up. Are you Fantastic. kidding me? Fantastic. <laughs> Dragon rage, everyone. Let me uh, exit the full screen here. High T comics is full of rage. You know, Love it. Fantastic, Jimmy. Really cool. Thanks. Did you Crown do that? Fire, number yes. one, 40 page full color fantasy I mean, comic did series. you do the video? The video, yes. Awesome. Okay. Oh, they did it, the video? No, no I, I did. Jimmy, you did it? How yeah, I do everything in my, like in my book. Man. Thanks. Yeah, I can make something really cool with like the Crusade logo. Oh, move around, do some, Jimmy Reyes, all some right. dragons or something, forming it or something really cool. You know, you do all kinds of stuff. Damn. Right now, what do you use? After Effects um, and uh, ZBrush, or you know, just depends on what what we're using. And then uh, 3D stuff, movement like that. There's 3D plugins you got to buy to put into After Effects. That's the only thing I don't have all the plugins that I would want. You know, to create more things so some things i have to actually like purchase from other somebody else who has the application to help out i can build it up to a certain point it's basically like building a house and go oh i'm not an electrician i need a i don't have the electrician you know i can't do the, the, the wiring and all that so now what kind of do you have a, a pretty powerful computer to handle all the graphics or um no uh i did get <laughs> <laughs> not like what i want you know uh, yeah, it's a it's a powerful computer. I mean, I beefed it up pr pretty much. It's a I have an iMac. Um, it was the iMac Pro. Now they have the M1 chip, so the M1 chips are just much better, hmm. uh, much better processor, video, you know, cards and stuff that are. Mine's outdated now. You know. Hang on, but, I gotta. I have to. Uh, I, I have to interject here real quick. We got uh So our our buddy Dan over here says, "Yeah, Billy, I'll be at Garden State. What hotel is everyone staying at?" I don't want it to intrude, but I'd like to be close to the action, right? And then our associate producer, Vaughn Coleman, comes in and says, Danger University, we're staying at the Ballsack Hotel. Make sure you get <laughs> <laughs> And then Dan, Dan responds with, thanks, Vaughn. Fuck you. <laughs> the Ballsack Room, that's awesome. Hey, where do you get a, where do you get a middle, middle finger emoji? I, I could use yeah. that. Sometimes. Hey, man, if we can't have fun... 
on a comic book stream, right? I don't know where you could have fun. Oh my but God. Uh, Dan, I'm not quite sure. Um, I'll let you know when I find out. Uh, it's funny because Graham knows all this stuff. Graham, Graham is very in. Debbie sets everything up. Well, they, wherever the hotel they they put us and they invite us. Mm-hmm. But if I recall, it was like the call Deb or Tucci. I'll call Deb. All right. See what she says. Hey, you guys, I got three pages today of, of Garbage Man. Uh, and, Garbage uh, Man from... Uh, Aaron Lepresti's... Uh, nice. Oh, campaign, wow. So the, in, in his Wraith of God, you got Garbage Man, you got um, uh, Nightclub, and there's mm-hmm. the Garbage Man's about a 16-page story. So I've already colored two, and I got uh, three more to do right now. So I'm, I'm really excited. It's just, it's you know, wow. it's kind of like one of those things where it's where the work's all done and it's just... It's fun, you know, like, like sometimes, you know, when I'm doing it from the start, like, I gotta think of it, I gotta work out the compositions, got this is sort of like, it's all done. <laughs> I can just play with it, you know. It, is like it a supplemental here. book that you're doing? It, uh, I don't know if it's supplemental or part just in inside the book, um, mm. additional, like additional pages. Because he, he did say there were three books in that campaign, so I, I don't remember. Yeah. Three could be just, you know, could be an additional separate book. I, I don't know the details on that, so yeah, it, it looks phenomenal. And and you are just you are firing on all cylinders, my friend. Yeah, I'm having fun, man. With so. that, I'm um, yeah. gonna get like Dan uh, about the the convention real quick. Um, the, there are several. It's in Morristown, New Jersey. It's whatever the suites are. I'll let you know. There's plenty of time. We we have plenty of time um, to you know to book that. But we'd love to see you guys. All the hotels are also real close to each other. But it's some kind of suites. Um, I don't know if it's a Hilton suites. And uh, they're really affordable, too, which is cool. So come on in for Saturday. Saturday, I got a meeting Saturday, dinner meeting for Saturday night. And that should be done around, I don't know, 9, 8, 8, 9. And then we hang out in the parking lot of the hotel. Me and Graham and anyone else got pickups. We've opened the ba- the beds of our trucks. You know, we, we put all the booze on it and smoke some, light some cigars up. and Tailgate, make time. a tailgate party. In the- yeah, Vaughn Coleman's had to start a <laughs> fight with some stranger. <laughs> they were like you, you guys be a little quiet and Vaughn threw him into the bushes. It was crazy. He wow. kicked him into the bushes. He like round roundhouse kicked him in the bushes and ran off. And the cops came like, I don't know who that fucking guy was. <laughs> yeah. And then no and then Vaughn came back or as soon as the cops left. It was awesome. Wow. Anyway, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Let's talk about your campaign right now. Well, that's so, the kind of action in Dragon Race. That's the, that's the kind of manliness we got in there. Yeah. Roundhouse kicking everybody. Good uh, se- segue into it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, Jimmy, you got a couple of covers here. This is a gorgeous cover, my friend. Look at that. Thank you. Yeah, Ethan helped me on the uh, the face of that that character uh, with the horns. Yeah. You know, I, I originally, the way I drew it, he, he said some of the uh, portion on, like, her lip and nose were off a little bit. And just, like, a tiny, it was a tiny little tweak, and we did. And, yeah, it opened up a lot for me. To, I realized, wow. And, uh, and it, made, it just made her face look so much more attractive. Excellent. Hey, guys, you know what I got? recently and they are so helpful i wish i had this years ago oh wow no way yeah, the head of your little heads. heads just like doll heads or heads people have. yeah they're not expensive yeah and, and they're sculpted yeah. so well this one, i think this one is uh, the captain america guy who's uh, chris evans and then just a standard girl face and i mean the thing is you get you know you're not really sure about an angle now you got something to hold you know uh, that was oh, what a, a great vicious, idea so vicious little heads. girls who are <laughs> Oh, look at that. They can have a little romantic relationship, too. <laughs> Did Lopez get you these? Is that not? I, I just got these on Amazon. Oh. You know, they weren't expensive, like 25, 30 bucks. It looks like the mom from For... um, Modern mm-hmm. Family. Oh, yeah, it does. What's her name? Um, yeah, yeah. Deborah. Dude, it's hot. Oh. All you need is, is a, you know, a standard construction of a face, and, and then you can kind of build upon that and that sort of thing. So, yeah, they're yeah. really really i recommend them uh, there's nothing like sculpting actually they're just sculpting to to learn the, the human figure and learn to kind of think about it three-dimensionally it's it's huge you know what a great idea i mean i even have the she heads i don't want to pop them off but what a great idea you know so, you know it's also is that um i have the heart of a small child <laughs> oh no <laughs> yes thank well, you i think we all I did a jar on my desk over there i gotta i'll show it to you guys uh maybe on uh on the kings or something one night oh jimmy what do you got Oh, this is what I use when I'm sketching out dragons. Look, let me see if it gets. I gotta cover my eyes so it'll focus. 
You got to back it up a little bit, I think. Yeah, yeah you see, got your fortune. If I cover right. my, if I cover, yeah, there, there you go. go. There you go. You did it. See, oh, is, that what, is, that, is that the trick to cover your eyes? Well, yeah, because I have it set to focus on eyes, so it's it'll, portrait, it'll, okay. portrait, yeah. So that's what the portrait technology is. It's yeah, you know, I have my father's eyes. <laughs> the jar next to the kid. And then they're they're in a box next to the to the heart of the small child. <laughs> Yeah, Wait, I, I thought you were speaking. I thought you were speaking figuratively. You you actually have <laughs> heart of a small child. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Ryan, I thought he was like, yeah, I just love everything from my childhood. Yeah, exactly. Like That's not holding thinking. up a jar. <laughs> wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, who did this cover, Jimmy? Me, me. I you did um, three. Oh, B. Okay, you did two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I did the oh, wrap around too. Eclectic style. Look at that. You got this style, which is almost seems. It's it's softer, and then you got that one, which is bolder. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thanks. I love I love rendering in, in hard shadows and yeah, great and... colors too. Oh, and yeah, yeah, he he did that. That's the thing about you know the, the Photoshop now the way you can color and it, it's like you can you can do this. I think it's better for fantasy than it used to be because now you can really do a lot of different shading and different kinds of you know atmosphere that give you that organic feel that you couldn't really get years ago with comic book flat coloring you know yeah yeah I, that. And, and I, I could it. color that that that'd be cool man that, that, i think maybe that, you can have a colored edition of this jimmy as a you know yeah like maybe a, a special perk dan lawless painted Disney painted, painted style. david finch cover bro yeah, yeah. that'd be yeah, kind of wild be awesome. man because I, I, all i needed is the pencils you know that's what I'm telling the, the backers. I'm like, man, there's so much I want to do with Dragon Ridge, but you need the capital. You know, I'd yep. love to hire like Dan to paint, do a painted cover. Like, that would be yeah, amazing. We can't work for free, guys. You gotta, yeah. gotta hire us. That's right. Yeah, you, <laughs> gotta, you gotta pay people. So, I, I mean, throw in like make it a poster or something. Like, that would be nice, you know, to give all the backers like a stretch goal, you know, like a painted Dan Lawless, yeah. David Finch cover. Yeah, you so know? spread it around if you can, guys. Really appreciate that. But, and, uh, get people interested in because uh this this is this grows as it goes man we get we hire each other and that sort mm -hmm. of thing and and uh, these comic books get better and better and you know we can put so much time into this work we can do absolute best work you know yeah I, I have just recently gotten have gotten to the point where i don't have to freelance i'm concentrating completely on dragon rage and i'd like to be able to continue that hopefully enough i get enough support enough backers that I, i'm able to just focus you know, on Dragon Ridge and just try to make it the best IP that I can, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, without having to do, you know, support myself in freelance where I was doing most of Dragon Ridge at the beginning in between freelance work, like in, in little spare time. And I was, I found that the quality of my work wasn't as, as good as it would be if I was spending the full day doing Dragon Rage. Freelance uh, comics stuff or freelance uh, other work? Comic stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so for me, I'm still working in my advertising stuff because it just it's it's kind of hard to take that plunge because it's, it, it's yes the work's kind of steady and uh, <laughs> somewhat anyway. Yeah, you got to so. make a living, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But you know, the, you know, as as I'm getting more familiar with this, I'm coming back, kind of dipping my toe in the water, and and it, it's a lot of fun, man. It'd be fun to to do a, a book, man. So yeah it's scary yeah like you said taking that plunge i i finally just did it i just went man this is what i want this is really what i want to do that, that's a great and, image there that's fantastic yeah wow thank you and yeah this will I, be in color this book correct yep it, yeah it'll be in color uh full color same color as a cover uh andrew dollhouse and uh i i love great art, Jimmy. Conan. thank yeah, you a Thanks lot of work it. in there yep great Thanks. art I mean, this is if, if there's a campaign uh, in need of greater exposure, my goodness, that's deserving of uh, it's definitely this beautiful. Uh, how, many, uh, where, how many more pages you got to do, Jim? I have the book laid out. I'm just going back and tightening up the book. Um, I think I've got about maybe 12 more pages uh, out of the 40 page book to do. Wow, really? And then I got to go back and ink everything. I, I've only, I only have those pages inked. Yeah. And there's the beautiful wife. Uh, yes. And, uh, Annabelle. Annabelle. Oh, I can't go bigger with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one's the writer actually talking about. Yeah, Dave, uh, can you tell some people? Tell us about uh, the story of uh, Dragon Rage. 
Yeah. So, you know, I really wanted to do something this time around that had a lot of character to it, like that. <laughs> you know? It's great. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Jimmy. <laughs> so, you know, really this came about because of you, Jimmy, you know, you had this outline for this story, this, this idea. And, uh, you know, the, the story that you had, you had already drawn, uh, quite a bit of it and came up with the characters and things. And I just kind of sat down and fleshed it out. Um, the, the main thrust of the story, you've got these two opposing Kings, um, and they're at a point where, you, you know, just like all rulers, they want to try to be completely in control. And, uh, you know, you've got these other forces that are kind of working against all of that. And at the heart of it, you've got these characters, the Dragari, who can kind of capture the the strength, the spirit, the, the rage of the dragons in their weapons. And, um, you, you know, there are people that are trying to stop all of that. Um, and, you, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, cool stuff going on as far as there's conflict there's there's um there's relationships in there and it's it's kind of all intertwined it's a big jump from what we were doing before you know with the original dragon rage story which was very small we were telling a very small story back then and this one has expanded and it's it, it's you know a lot more characters a lot more um there's politics and i mean there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on in this story and then there's you know cool things to look at there's boobs <laughs> yeah. Boots, yeah. uh, sounds like jimmy has to draw backgrounds <laughs> jimmy do you have to draw backgrounds yeah. in this story oh, oh well, yeah man it, it's a long video so you don't have to play everything okay that, All was, right. that was really the key part there yeah. well guys please if you guys can share share oh thank you eric um appreciate that but this is a beautiful campaign dude right. clean look how clean it is you're not you're not a two not a not a nutty campaign like i put on with oh, so many different layers you got some great options right here you could there we go cover a cover b a wraparound cover finch cover uh that's it that's not working jimmy your link to your uh print your, uh, it, your deluxe it may not have just loaded I think. oh maybe it didn't load okay yeah yeah you get, a, you, get a, you get the four cover uh bundle here all in everything for all all in for only 155 dollars come on guys then we plus, got the give me everything plus the all job. in plus with the new uh the latest cover that was added yep, and that's it and you get these beautiful original covers well done guys please that's that's finch art that's yeah wow. david, oh, david finch uh the only traditional art that i have in this entire campaign right now and did uh, you find that you were able to speed up doing <laughs> digital yeah yeah digital uh I, I mean it's so much faster for me yeah, I gotta try it. I gotta look into and, that. Later. And I can experiment with my layout so much. You know, I can just draw something. If I don't like it, wipe it out, and I start over. And it's just like like this. Or I keep bits and pieces to it, and then redraw. I don't know. I think you boys pieces. should start. Should start. Should uh, talk about um, what you would call it about a collaboration. I think it'd be a cool twenty four hour variant or something like that. You do it on the Kings. You launch it on the Kings Monday. You know, and it's live for 24 hours, man. Yeah, that would that would be amazing. I've all, I've I've actually brought Dan on the show because I love his work. I first saw him on the Savage Sword of Conan because I'm a, you know big fan of that. That's what I collect. There you go. Not a tooth out of place. Excellent. Yeah. My, so Excellent. Jimmy, you have my. You're aware of that? Uh, I did that one cover, two thirty one. My one and only Savage Sword of Conan cover. Right before they yeah. right before they got they they stopped doing the black and white book I'm like. Two issues away from it, I got in there. Well, you wow. got in. Yeah, but I, I mean, this is Billy. This is thirty years ago. I mean, this is, this is a yeah, long time. I remember thirty years ago. I wasn't quite in thirty years ago. Nobody cared about me. I was. I had a dream. I was a. I was a man without a dollar and a dream. <laughs> it's always like you're so rom like romantic. You're like uh, I am a romantic. Yeah. <laughs> no, no wonder you swept swept Deborah off her feet. You know? Yeah, you're a poet. <laughs> I was also a cocky little shit too, though. Uh, I think we're all pretty much. I still feel that way. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I, re I still remember where I was at when and what comic store I was in when she number one came out. Oh, really? I was I was working for uh, an an old couple um, who had a comic store and they uh, didn't have a car. They were so hippie they would not buy a car. So wow. they would have me pick them up in my little dad SUV, take them to go pick up from the distributor Diamond pick up all of the boxes and we bring them and then they would go through and fill sub boxes 
and they would pay me in comics. So they had this book named She that was on there and I didn't know anything about it. You know, I was new, uh, you know, just started collecting comics, had no money and they would give me a certain amount. And she said, this is going to be a hot book. You want this book. Wow. And, and I, I grabbed it. And when she went up, man, I sold it. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I, was young. I needed the money, you know? And, oh yeah, dude. Good for you. Sell that sucker. Yeah. Billy, yeah. What year was uh, she, what was the, uh, well, interestingly enough, she came out. What is this? Uh, the wrong page. Uh, interestingly enough, she came out uh, on March 23rd, uh, 2000, I'm sorry, 1994. 1994. Yeah. So 94. what we're doing is, is I have a new YouTube channel. You guys will all be on it. A new, a new YouTube show here on the pop XP every Thursday night. It's going to be called Thursday night live with Billy Tucci. And, uh, on the 23rd of March, I'm hoping I'm going to invite my pal, Brian Polito, maybe get buzz, maybe get a couple of the guys that are, you know, gals that were all around at that time when the books first launched and do it, you know, do a bad girls celebration. Wow. Because those books all came out one yeah. right after the other. Jim, uh, uh, Brian's book came out at the end of, of February. I think the 21st of February. Mine came out March 23rd. And Dawn and I, had no idea. That time, right? I had no idea about you know about his book. And then Vampirella came out like two weeks after she. Oh, the Harris version? Yeah, the Harris one. And, it and was, Dawn and cried. It was like nuts. It, it blew up. Yeah. Oh, we got a super chat from my brother here. Phil, Phil, thank you for the $5 super chat. Billy, congrats on the on the launch, bro. I hope everyone checks out the Lost Pages three. We're feeling the brunt of the shadow band. Oh, he got. Mm. He oh, got he got banned. Damn. Ooh, that's why he was asking for a retweet this morning. He said, "Hey, brother." Uh, ah, yeah. Thing. Sorry, bro. I'll back that. I, I had a busy morning getting this this thing together and stuff and, and promoting it. Um, Billy is uh, is Zombie Sama. Uh, Band shadow band yet or I don't know I don't think no, so I just um, saw it when I but we just broke two hundred backers you know Phil you also have to remember bro it, you know with this with this attitude uh, you have to go in with the attitude that it's as Aaron says all the time it's a it's a it's a it's a marathon it's not a sprint and just keep promoting it yourself and promoting it yourself it just sucks that they yeah. did that I oh, don't it's, think it's we're so shadow dirty band. tricks that these people are doing it's it's nasty to to Dude, mess with got, someone's I livelihood got, yeah I can't I can't. Uh, post on Facebook because I shared or tried to share with the Japanese, the Chinese balloon, weather balloon was flying overhead yeah. and something that somebody else had, had posted. And I tried to share it. It was Hunter Biden in his underwear, like a picture he <laughs> took of himself or one of his hookers took of him or something. Yeah. And uh, with the balloons on top of him, like he's floating, he's just standing there <laughs> like this. And they banned me for nine. They, they restricted me for 90 days. Oh, I can't stream live. I can't, um, uh, all my feed, all my posts will be on the bottom of the feed of people's feeds. Wow. Um, I can't do something else. I think I can advertise. Isn't that interesting? Um, yeah. Right. And, and I, and I couldn't post on Facebook for like three days. How does that violate free speech though? I have like, no I idea. Mean, the, the, their standards of, free... of what I'm like, Hey, this is this guy. It's all political. It's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, freedom plus of speech, it's comical. Right? I mean, it's comedy for goodness. Yeah, this is a picture he yeah. took himself. Yeah, asshole. I'm just, uh, it just drives me nuts. Anyway, yeah, it's, I, I can't, I don't recognize this country sometimes. With what, what, what I've never, I never would have dreamed you would, would yeah. suppress speech like this, dude. It's so infuriating. Um, yeah. I'm gonna do a little uh, harping of my own stuff right now, if you don't mind. Yeah, as you see right now, I am drawing the let me, let me make it go big real quick. Hang yeah. On. And... Uh, Billy, I was kind of part of that that bad girl thing in the beginning there with barbed wire too, though. That was, yeah, bar, that. yeah, that's right. So, oh get, yeah, barbed wire. Get, get old Mike. See if Mike Richardson wants to come on. I didn't. Yeah. Did Did you know the guy Dark, from Dawn? I love Dark Horse. Yeah, Mike Richardson is a friend of mine. They, 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 when he even published She for a miniseries, he was like, "What are you doing with She?" I'm like, "Ah, oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that." He's like, yeah, "I'll publish She." So I'm like, oh, "Okay, thanks." Wow. Did and, Did he uh, sell but, Dark Horse? Did he sell it? Did any he end up selling it? That's right. Somebody did. Oh, buy I don't it. know. Yeah, there's a new owner, I think. Really? Yeah, yeah was it not like uh, a film company or somebody bought it? I know Mike Richardson. Yeah. I had heard. That's yeah. why I like doing was... my own books because I really don't care about any of those big guys anymore. With Zombie people. Sama. Zombie yeah. Sama. So yeah. So right now, what I'm doing is this is this is going to be, and I still draw traditionally completely. Um, this is going to be our cover for our she, uh, our our summer. Indiegogo slash Kickstarter, because we do both, is going to be she, 
uh, Gate Crasher. And um, this is Anna and with uh, uh, get, uh, get Kepto. Uh, my Japanese is awful. Um, and uh, th this is actually based off of the first inception of She that I drew, the first design of She. Oh, um, right. wow. talk about yeah, earlier. I'll share that page if I can. Let me let me share that so you could see that. Let me go. You know, uh, you know Billy, or, um, Jimmy, you were saying uh, digital is fa faster for you. I think it takes me longer. I just, oh, really? Because because I when I I tend to zoom in on stuff, and then also oh, I'm working yeah. on something. You know, it's only a, a color and something an inch or a quarter inch big, and I pull it back. Like like I think I'm you know I'm drawing it big, and then I zoom it back, and like I only did a little tiny bit. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah. So. <laughs> It, I, I tried it to uh, draw uh, that natural and then, you know scan it in and color. It seemed like the best. So you draw you draw you draw traditionally and then you scan it in and just color your yeah. original pencil. Because that digital. where I where I did it all digital was Two Fisted Manly Tales and and it's like yeah it looked pretty cool but man it took forever and not, and I just I can't plus I don't have any original art you know that's I mean, some of these pieces I want to own you know I yes, want to own too. that art I want to see that art so. It's really frustrating. I don't have that, any original art for that or some of the other pieces I've done, you know, recently. When I first was getting back in, I said, I'm just doing all digital because it looks really sharp and stuff. But it takes took me longer, I feel like. That's the one downside is that I don't have anything to augment my income, you know. Um, yeah. And I'm, but I'm so new that I, I think it's okay for my first issue because nobody really knows who I am. But I, if as I build, hopefully I'll build a fan base and then people will want my originals. You know? Oh, they will. Yeah. The thing is, it, it, the thing is, is I mean, you're a fantastic artist, so they're going nice. to to want it. Uh, yeah. The problem is, is it's and it, it's a good thing because you are doing your own stuff. You are your you know you're, you're the master of your domain. But it's if comics were easy, everyone would do it, right? And they're not. Yeah. It's hard, it, especially self publishing because oh, you're yeah. not just self publishing. You are now the marketing department. You yeah. know, you're 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 the editorial department. You're the you're the you know, the shipping department, you know, you're the production department, you're all these things now thrown into, into one. And, yeah. and we're working that we're all working yeah. even now. There are There's days, honestly, easy. I look at the campaign and I get really discouraged. I go, man, like, how can I get the word out there? Like, how can I put this in front of people? <laughs> you know? you, you got to just keep, yeah, that's the thing is you just, you just got to keep what you're doing. You just got to keep yeah. smashing yeah. away at it. I mean, look at it, even, our little campaign zombie Samo, you know, our, you know, we launched it three days ago and our, our goal is 15 grand and we're just shy of that. Wow. You know, now that's not yeah. she, obviously. I mean, we're hitting $80,000 in the first day with she, Jeez. but you, yeah. but you also want to get more books out there, more product, more, you know, uh, you know, we all have all diff different ideas. I have fun ideas. I, you know, big books, mm -hmm. smaller books. And, um, the thing is just, to, is to keep slogging away. You got to just keep hammering away, keep promoting. Yeah. And, and it'll do it. It'll it'll break it. It's, it's one of the good things. And I, I can see it with Debbie um, and, and Dan. You probably have the same situation in your life. But my wife is my biggest supporter. She's always telling me, just stay with it. You know, believe in yourself. She's always helping me because there are days where, you know, it's it's a lot of work, like you said. And uh, I get I get discouraged sometimes. I just go, oh, man. Like You know, the thing is, too, Jimmy, is you're going to have a product that's yours. You own it. Yeah, and 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 you know, like I, I, I every once in a while I get something like from Marvel, like a, a cloak and dagger compilation or something, something I worked on, you know, thirty years ago, and so it's like they're just reminding me that I'm not, I can't sell that, you know, like if I had had my own creative mm -hmm. stuff thirty years ago for the, I, for thirty years I could be, I could continually sell those books at conventions every time I go. So once you own it, you can sell it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the great things about the, you know, the creator own stuff. It's like. You, oh yeah, it's yours, man. It's, it's the whole yeah. reason I went. So it's the wrong. long game, really. You're playing the yeah, long, that's, long game. Yep. Brian Plato, Billy Tucci, you know Todd McFarlane, all these guys with great IPs. They own themselves. You know. Yeah, we have yeah. like six on the buses planned. Wow. Because I published like a hundred books, you know, or more, maybe more, maybe 130, wow. 140, maybe one hundred thirty, one hundred forty, maybe one hundred fifty. I don't remember how many books we published. I, yeah. In 10, Ten years. Uh, so and, not including and, the new stuff. I remember so, the what was it? The first spinoff was like T Tomeo or Tomoe? Tomoe, yeah, yeah. Tomoe, yeah. Yeah. And Amanda Connor drew and Jimmy inked. Jimmy oh. Bobbiati, who was here, and then you scared him away. I know he was like, "This is too many, too much <laughs> no, Jimmy no. for everybody," you know. Yeah. But anyway, so what I'm working on now is is uh, this is the characters based off of my 1990. This is 1990. I drew this, and uh, I had this character for this 
you know, this samurai type, you know, I mean, look at the, the, the tip of, you know, the, the stereotypical red circle over the eye, you know, and, um, it's kind of, I mean, usually really the, the, the red circle thing is, is, you know, like th that's something that, uh, it's, it, it's, you've seen that before, but the way you're using it, it's the reds, like the reds, you know, the, yes, the that's what Germany I did. Flag, yeah. And know? then I was told by a friend of mine who was a, who's a comic book journalist, like in 93, cause in 93, when I was about to launch, she number one, she still had that red circle on her eye. Oh, wow. and, and, uh, yeah. And even in the, she draw, if you see the, the, I think, I don't know if it's on she number one. There's a couple of pages. If you look real closely, you could see the the circle, the the light. Huh. He's like, you don't need that circle on that eye. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, you don't need that. So, uh, so that's how it started. But this character now, though, is who Anne is going to team up with in the Gate Crasher comic. And what she Gate Crasher is 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 Anna gets trapped in comic book time. Oh, and wow. she gets thrown back into 1938, and she's got to get back to the present. But in order to do that, she has to battle her way through all. The, the decades and all the different genres and all the trends of comics. That's so it's called uh, gate crash. You break it through another gate to wild. get to. So she goes from Superman's time to then, you know, Miss Fury and, and World War II to mm -hmm. the communist Red Scare, to horror, you know, to, to the 50s, yeah, yeah. to the cowboy comics, to dinosaurs, yeah. sci-fi, you know, sci yeah. all that, you know, going all the way through, you know, the Frazetta era, to wow. the Marvel, the '60s Marvel, you know. Are you yeah, gonna have different artists like, draw each? No, no, it's all, no, it's 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 all it's all uh, it's, it's all uh, uh, me and uh, um, and uh, Leonardo are drawing it, and wow. uh, it's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be so much fun. Like I said, so many different looks, inks, you know, pencils, inks, different going all the way yeah. through the you know the hard boiled '80s stuff to the black and white revolution. And wow. then uh, you know to 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 through the '90s where she come confronts bad girls, and uh, so it's gonna be it's it's a lot of fun, and yeah. it's all about it. it we, again, we're gonna involve a lot of public domain characters, yeah. uh, a lot of creator own characters. Uh, I'd love to have cameos by all you guys in your books. Yeah. And uh, I got you a know, female character with the sword. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's up. gonna be. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So these are. These, that, this I don't. Is my, I don't this. mind female characters uh, as long as they're hot. You know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's like what what you know, Marvel's doing these characters like they're female characters, but they're not very attractive. And it's like, well, that's sort of again, it's a male audience you're selling it to. Yeah. And, yeah. And you know that. That's the thing is you know that, and it and it's it's makes it you know fun. Clinton, Clinton sucks on the wall. Yeah, I, I hated Bill Clinton. I thought he was a piece of shit. I still think he's a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. So look at that. I drew this is 1993. So this is what she looked like. This is what she was gonna look like when I first debuted her, and and they're like, yeah. Tone her down a little bit. Debbie's like, I don't know about this. I'm like, no, but that's what comics. That's what you know, because that's you could see the image influence now and yeah. stuff. And, and then I was like, yeah, I went. I, I bought were you it. still I in the? It. Was it the Navy when you designed this? Designed her the character? Uh, in no, in college and before I went to the Army. Oh, Army. In 1990. Yeah, I was all in the in the in the Army in the in the reserves in the Guard, and then I got activated for the Gulf War. So. Uh. Um, so that's, yeah. So I was sketching away and, and these are like other sketches. Wow. So this was all in, in college when you were just, uh, yeah, uh, th that's the work? first stuff is college is, yeah. is this is college. This, this stuff. How, how did you, what, what got you inspired to create? Well, man, I loved, uh, I'll be honest. I loved Electra. I love Frank Miller's yeah. run. You can see the Electra influence here, yeah. you know? I can see the fashion designer influence, really. I mean, that's that's yeah. yeah that's that, how I drew it. This is pastels. That, that served you well for as far as designing the costume too. Yeah, so. yeah. I think this is oh, yeah. gouache. Actually, this is gouache. The red, I'm sure. Wow. And just having fun. This is how the character first started. Was this? Oh no! And really? The male character. Yeah, that's how she's how it started. I'm like, you know, wow. I think it'd be better as a female character. When, when did you create yeah, with, the name? Female she... character with with a thong. That sounds better. Yeah, the yeah. character. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, we had the, it, it went through a, a couple of different names. Again, it went to the Gekketo, Ge to mm -hmm. Ran, which means rebellion. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then my friend Audrey Oiki, uh, we were sitting in her apartment talking and going through Japanese books. She's Japanese, first generation Japanese American, and going through a bunch of. Uh, uh, you know, just names and stuff. And, and then I was like, what's Japanese for death? You know, like, what do you think of death with the death coin? And, and she wears it around her neck and, and, uh, she, she's like, Oh, it's she, you know, she, and I'm like, oh, she, 
And I'm like, no one's ever done that. And I, you know, I, no, yeah. you know, I copyrighted it and yeah. did all that. And like, nope, no one had ever done she in comics, SHI. That's so boom. Great. How, how did you yeah. advertise back then? Because I remember it was like going diamond, diamond and, and hope. Yeah, I had these the partners. Yeah, I had these partners who, who uh, they had no money, but they said they did. And we took ads out in Diamond. And I wrote up, you know, Debbie wrote as the uh, director of marketing for this new comic book company called Empire Comics. It was called Empire, which is interesting. Empire Publications, which is interesting because that's, it's you know. Um, Impact Studios. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Lopez's uh, company. <laughs> Uh, you know, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're so, going to confuse uh, so many people. They're going to, yeah, you know, Empire, even Aaron's going to be like, ah, yeah, yeah it was Empire going? Comics, but there was a store in Manhattan, I think, called Empire Comics. Yeah. So I yeah. couldn't use it. They went out of business. Mm. Um, so that's why Aaron can use it now. But, uh, so I, that's why if you look at the cover to sheet number one, you see Empire Publications on the top and then Crusade Comics, uh, Empire Publications on the bottom and Crusade Comics logo on the top. Uh, because I got lawyers to get away from those guys, and uh, they wanted to own fifty percent of the of the character, blah blah blah, and all this crap. But thank God they didn't. So I was able to actually, if you don't mind me, how do I do? You know, it? she's a great. I mean, just the, the sound, the, the phonics of it, the sound of it is. It yeah, sounds yeah, like, like a sound yeah, effect. Yeah. Sounds like a ninja's That's movement, fine. you know? Yeah. So it was, and it was fun. I was, I love samurai films and all this. And right. So uh, yeah, so this is going to be the cover to the to the gate key, gate crasher um exclusive there we go if i turn this off and turn this bad boy on so that's how i draw guys i draw yeah and my camera's real close but i and it's the camera's off so it makes it look that the proportions a little off but so it's gonna be anna and uh get kept and the two of them and their adventures wow. and they're gonna battle dinosaurs and crazy so shit like that it's gonna be fucking awesome. what made you change her name before uh publishing um i don't know I, her name was going to be Katana. And then I learned there was a Marvel character named or DC char character mm. named Katana, so I couldn't use that. And then I don't know. I just I just wanted something special, you know. It just wasn't. It it wasn't. It wasn't. You know, it just wasn't right. You know. You know when some things are just not right, and you keep going with it. Like I my, my first that. marriage. I to yeah. change that. And we did, and we went with she and man. Boy, she looks like she's got some attitude. Like she's she's a little yeah. Her, her, her eye uh, expression. Anna. Yeah. yeah, well, she is because yeah. she's looking at, you know, here's my character, Anna, and she's looking at this, you know. The hot you know, young girl. Little, yeah, yeah, with, <laughs> with this the thong and all this stuff. Like, what the hell is like, you? Hey. Because Anna wears her, her skirt now and all this. And it's a, you know, a little fun, fun stuff, weird, wacky mm. stuff. So, anyway, so that's that, boys. So, if it's okay, I'm going to start working and I'm going to say goodbye to you guys so I can actually yeah. focus on this. Because I'm good, I'm good to see you again, Billy. Fun with you guys, and I've drawn. This is all I've drawn in three in two and a half hours. Is that? <laughs> yeah, that's that. Exactly that's that's you got any streams? Yeah. Like then you, you you're talking mm -hmm. and shit and shoot. You know. Yeah. Yeah, dude, we're doing the kings. <laughs> we do these stream stuff. We're off for like three, four hours, and next thing you know, it's over. Yeah, yeah. And we, we're all good time. So it's amazing right, boys, how fast so it just. I'm gonna say goodbye to you. If that's all right, I'm gonna go get a yeah. drink. And uh, thank you guys for for joining. Um, looking forward to having you guys on. Um, Thursday night live with Billy Tucci. If you guys will come on with me, uh, always yeah, love seeing absolutely. you guys on the Kings and all our other shows. And um, I'll talk Zombie to you guys Samba. later. Don't forget Zombie, Zombie Samba. Samba. Yeah, Zombie Samba, guys, help us. We're so close to our goal. Thank you. If I could share that, let me share my screen. Yeah, that's fun to say, Billy. Zombie Samba. It's a fun. Yeah. It's our fun. <laughs> it's our fun comic. Zombie Samba. So uh, there's small. There you go. So if you guys wouldn't mind, please. Uh, you know, check it out. Please support us. It's a crazy uh, again, story, isn't it? Like the, the the high school, the high school's uh, situation. Dorm. College. Yeah, dorm. Out of control, teen, out of control, teenage hormones trigger the next zombie apocalypse. Rini cover uh, there. It's, it's not teenage. It's coed. It's coed. Ethan got me into the whole teenage. Thing. Oh really yeah. Cool. <laughs> They're coeds. Out of control coeds. Rini did that beautiful cover. She is getting um, better and better, man. She is really. It's coming, coming along, isn't Dude, she? Dude, she's a beast. Mm -hmm. She works hard. She's really. She is a beast. Dan, uh, I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with Dan Mendoza. He's great. The Zombie sure. Tramp. Yeah. This isn't is Dan's that awesome Tramp? cover. Yeah. And then uh, John's. Ex this is the Indigo exclusive, which is taken for a classic um, uh, Volta Hara cover. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And uh, here's my hardcover edition. Got lots of fun, lots of cool stuff, and. Uh, and that's that. So I'm going to get to drawing. I'm going to keep yeah. streaming while I draw. Um, 
But if it's okay, guys, I don't mean to. Yeah, we let you get busy, bro. Let you focus. You guys are awesome. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys soon, all right? All right, thanks, Okay, we'll see you, man. Guys, Jimmy's campaign is in the comments. Please comment on it. I mean, please check it out. Even if you if you can't uh, pledge for it, same thing with mine. Uh, at least share it. Share any social uh, media with everybody. Okay, guys. Thank you all. We'll do. All right, guys. All I'll right. see you guys later. All right. See you. Bye. Bye, guys. All right. So it's me. It's us and Shy, because it's really called Shy. It's not called She. If you guys could stick around with me for a minute, um, let's have some fun and draw a little bit. I'm gonna get a, a drink, more tea. And instead of a chair stream, I guess you get a little bit of a chair. You're going to get a uh, – let's see if I move my camera here. You're going to get a chair stream and an art stream. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Be right back. Hey, hey, hey. Holy crap, these chair streams really do work, huh? <laughs> All right, thank you guys for joining. So look at this one I got. Amazon came today. Keep these lights on. Hold on. 
So what I'm doing, I don't know if you guys know that I was, when I was in the, in the Army, I was in the, the Airborne. And so the, a friend of mine, one of my old Army buddies, joined, yeah, I'll turn that light off, joined a thing called the Phantom Airborne Brigade down in Florida. And uh, so then I joined it. And it's a, it's a nonprofit uh, unit where a bunch of, you know, we're old veterans and active duty guys, uh, retirees. Uh, once a month down in Florida, they parachute. They, they jump out of C-47s, the old World War II planes. They jump out of uh, Twin Otter planes, uh, helicopters. It's a different jump every time. And um, <clears throat> uh, what happened to the she-heavies? Every female character now, my, my character was never uh, super well endowed. Was that, Who said that? Who was that? Art? Roy? Yeah, my character, she was never big boobed. She's always had like a, like a I'd say a, a full B. How's that? Uh, from experience, anyway. So I got this, man. So I so I had to order though, but you got to wear, you know, um, they they have a uniform, so it, it's the multi cam, the OCP. So because uh, I have mine is the old, um, I got a pair of the desert camis and I got a pair of the BDUs. So uh, just got it. So I got to try it on, see if it fits. <laughs> Too much fun. And I got to wash that sucker like 50 times. I'm going to jump for my birthday in uh, in um, in August. So let me fix that so you guys can see me here. So come come this August, I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, um, I'm going to go for a jump down in Florida and uh, see how that goes. Like like a nut. Yeah, man. No, not Bud's school. BDU's. BDU's a battle dress uniform. That's Army. No, Bud's is, is Navy SEALs. I was I wasn't a Navy SEAL. I was just a paratrooper. N nothing special, but it was special to us. So I'm going to move this here and see if I could do this and see if it's in my way. You know, it's see, I, it's hard for me to draw. Let's do that. Um, I apologize, guys, but it's really hard for me to draw uh, with this camera here. And you guys could see the camera. I keep ooh, poke ooh, poke myself in the eye. I hope everyone's doing well. Sanchez, Florida, in three weeks. What? Bro, we're going down to Florida in April, and I'm missing Tartan Week, and I'm really upset about it. Debbie doesn't know that I'm really upset about it, or even I don't think she's going to care, to be honest with you. Um, but Tartan Week is the biggest uh, week for, for, you know, Scots, you know, in uh, in the, in the uh, in America. So Tartan Week, they get the Tartan Parade in New York City, a bunch of uh, cool events, and I'm going to miss it because I'll be down in Florida. But, oh, well. Right, first world problems on vacation. Our first vacation in I don't I don't know how how long, years, a lot of years. So all right, so I draw. I'm drawing right now. If you guys will see this, I draw for those anyone new joined us. Uh, I I do my covers. Let's do this. So just focus. I I draw my covers on um my roughs on Xerox paper. And then I go and I put, get artboard, put it on the artboard, clean it up. Then I'm going to hit it with, with this pencil. This is a 2H. I'm probably draw this whole thing with a 2H. And then once that's done and nice and clean, I go in with my Beryl Prismacolor. Sanchez uh, Cabron knows this, sees me drawing with this. It's a black. It's a Beryl Prismacolor. Let's hit that. This right here. These are great. Um, let's see if I can focus in on it. There you go. So, um, and uh, it, it it just melts on the paper. Gives a really nice black soft line. And it kind of separates uh, all my stuff from uh, from other people's. You know, I, you know, I love to ink myself, but uh, everyone does inks. So I figure if I add this little, um, you know, more of the softer dark uh, pencil, um, it makes it a little, makes it a little, little bit more mind, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, my. So I'm going to draw. And, uh, again, this is the variant cover. This is the Ash Can Edition cover. Our Ash Can is available on Zombie Sama. Let me go find Zombie Sama, see where it is. For the, for the She Gate Crasher Ash Can, it's 24 pages. Black and white. It's going to have my original art with, you know, word balloon less. And, um... And then uh, it's going to have a companion page, which will be uh, J.C. Vaughn's uh, original script. 
So where, where, there's the ash cans. You can buy three ash cans for $50. Three ash cans, man. Come on. Uh, where's my ash can? Does she even have my ash can up? It's got to be up. Wait a minute. Where's my ash can? I don't think she has my ash can as a perk. Hang on. Call Deborah Tucci. I might have to go uh, mute. Okay, so I got the news why. Uh, in order to buy the she book, it's part of the other. Um, it's part of the the other uh, camp, uh, uh, part of the package because this is not a she campaign. She said this is a zombie sama campaign, and we should focus on zombie sama. So, I guess she's right about that. So, all right, now I'm going to do. I was go in and start drawing. Let me get this. There you go. I need this bad boy brighter. I'm telling you, man, when it comes to, to you know, doing on this, this, this paper and all, I think I'm going to need like <laughs> stronger readers. I think right now my readers are like 125 or something. And I think I'm going to have to go like 175 or something. Maybe that, I don't know if that'll hurt my eyes though. If I could really zoom in on it. Zoom in. Zoom in. All right. I could probably find some copyright free music. You guys want to hear a little bit of copyright free jazz or something? Let's see if I could find some on the YouTube. Hey guys, please ask questions. You got any questions you want to ask? I'm writing on the wrong. I got it right over here. Copyright free. Japanese music or jazz? What do you guys want to hear? Japanese or jazz? Let's try Japanese first. Why not get in the mood? You guys tell me what you want because I can always go to the jazz. Here we go. No copyright. Japanese music. All right. Let's play it. Let's see how this sounds. That's an ad. Ooh, there's a samurai. Let's relax. What do you... Thank you. Oh, this is cool. Oh, sorry. You just can't even see this, can you? Sorry. Moving 
great, huh? Um, let me load this a little bit. Hang on. I believe uh, it's cool though. This is very cool. Oh, it's only two minutes long. I need like hours of jet. Here we go. There's 26 minutes of, of Japanese copyright free music. Perfect. Take turn the time off. Oh hell yeah. Okay, so um uh Chris, uh flying in New York. Are there buses from there to Morristown? I'm not sure. I don't know anything about it, but I'm sure you could take an Uber and it wouldn't be very expensive, but it's going to be a good time. It's a great little show and we're all going to be hanging out and having a good time. Um, when do you, when do you ever get, uh, when I got me, Graham, Andy Smith, Cecil, Ethan, some other champs, Vaughn, Coleman, all together. And Vaughn will tell you, it was a good night. Wasn't it Vaughn? If you're still there, I simply Vaughn the other way. In June, you are you bros? Yeah, I'm doing. Yes, we are doing both Saturday and Sunday. Well, you guys know I really appreciate all of you watching us, um, watching me tonight uh, on the show. Thank you so much. And uh, it's a little distorted, obviously, because of the way the angle of the artboard is and the camera. It's hard for me to get it exactly right from this angle. So I appreciate you guys, um, you know, being patient with me. But um, I have to have the camera move to the right, or I'm going to keep putting myself in the eye with it. But uh, I'm gonna I'll look up every every I don't know every minute or so. There you go, Chris Thacker. Yes, that's what we do, man. We have a great time. Hung out with Dan. Dan, we hung out right in uh. Oh, you're too kind. We hung out in in New York Comic Con. We had a great time. You bringing your crew, Dan, with you? I gotta fix this foot here. This is a crappy foot. Crappy. Come on, Bill Tooth, you're better than this. There is go. I spend, and I don't know if it's just me or other artists, or you guys who are artists out there, you guys spend like waste minutes and minutes that probably accounts to hours a week just trying to find things like erasers and stuff. I can't find my eraser, but I found this really cool coin for some reason that's on my art team. Do you guys know that you have, literally have billions of universes quite possibly inside a fingernail? Did you guys? Oh, too much fun. Too funny. That is my eraser. Hey, buddy, what's up? The what? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, is that home? Is your car gone? Is it, well, did you see a car when you walked in? When you walked up the driveway, was there a car there? Oh, she went to the dry cleaner. 
going to that wedding on in in, in uh, wherever the hell she's going, Arizona. Yeah, how was school? Knock yourself out. My son, Matthew, just got back from school. So, guys, I'm going to be doing this a lot. Um, uh, I'm going to be drawing, uh, doing some live stream drawings. I have uh, commissions I have to finish. And then I have to start the uh, the Gatecrasher book. So, um, if you guys don't mind hanging with me while I do that, we'll be doing a lot. Oh, I'll come back to that book because I'm not going to really know how this book should look. This book, which is off until I... Uh, Really get to the bottom of everything else. I'm gonna move my hands up. I got graphite on my hand. Whoa! Look where the little stuff is. The quickest way to wash your hands when you're drawing is to use this, all this crap we had to buy. It didn't work during COVID. Dude, me too. That was so much fun hanging out that show. This year, I'm, I'm probably only going to be doing New York Comic Con Saturday. Um, I'll let you know, though, for sure. Uh, but we'll hang out Saturday night. We'll get to it later. An Amazon guy walking across my lawn. Great. The walk across my lawn. Hey, is it me or is it Dr. Blevins? What? What is up? What is up, Mr. What is up with that? What is up with that picture, bro? Come on. Dude, that's the greatest picture I think ever done by AI. Dude. <laughs> Dude, I could just I wish I wish I could look like this. Oh one yeah, day, sure. Bro, one day, one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. How awesome is this stream, man, dude? You've been streaming for a minute. Yeah, and I, the thing is, I, I I had to say goodbye to everybody because I'm not getting any work done. I'm having too much fun hanging out with Jimmy Reyes and Dan Lawless and everybody. Yeah, I like that she picture, but I think she probably needs a big circle around her eye. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I see what Levin just went with that. You see this? <laughs> No, so don't, do don't do it. Messed up. I done messed up now. You done messed up now. You put a little baby Bly Blevins uh, picture on. All right. A little baby Bry Blevins. Uh, okay. I think this piece is coming out nice. So everybody, anyone who's watching, if you guys are new, uh, basically, what I do is I draw a rough on Xerox paper, then I put it on a, um, an artboard over it with my with my um, 
light box right here. And then I just start drawing away uh, on that. And I, I draw with a 2H pencil. I might probably go in with a HB, which is here. Um, and then I'll go in for the final with my uh, Barrel Prisma colors. And gives a nice soft look, doesn't it, Doctor B? It does, man. I have a serious question to ask you. Yes, sir. How how long were you at the art institute before you decided that comic books was going to be what you wanted to do? My, my I was, I I was this... at no, I was at the Fashion Institute of Technology. I was not at the yeah, art yeah. Institute. Oh, I meant to say fashion. Too. Yeah, I, um, I, did, I did know you were at the Fashion Institute. My I'm teachers sorry, I just spoke. Yeah, wrong. my my teachers had told me to. One of my teachers like you should do comics. And, you know, a lot, believe it or not, a lot of, a lot of us look, you know, like it was beneath you to do comics. You know, this again, you're talking 1989 and then she did it. And then I'm like, you know what? I always loved comics. And then I started buying them in like 19, yeah, 1989. I got back into comics. And, uh, and the reason was, was the one, uh, one of the kids brought in that uh, it was 88. And it was 88, not 89, I'm sorry. And that, that one is that one of the kids brought in the amazing Spider-Man, uh, was it number 300? The Tom McFarlane. And that, I was like, oh my God. Because what I had done was, I grew up loving, com you know, I, I loved comics. But once I started getting, and I don't know if any of the other artists in the audience, you guys are like this too. Once I started getting better at art, the less I, the, the, the farther I went from comics because I loved, you know, Joe Kubert and Walter Simonson, you know, Dave Stevens. I I, I discovered the Rocketeer. Mark Schultz had come out with Xenozoic Tales. Oh, no, that's not true. Mark Schultz came out with Xenozoic Tales in like 87 or something. Um, but, you know, George Perez, you know, all these, these greats, John Romita. Um, and I'm like, I could never do this. Uh, I, I can't draw like this. So I then moved away from comics. And then when I saw McFarlane's book, his art on that Spider-Man, it was so different. And it seemed like he was doing his own thing. He didn't, he, you know, he was going against all the, 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 all the social constructs, all the norms of, of comics and doing his own thing. And I'm like, man, this guy can do it. I can do it. And that's how I felt because I because he like he 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 liberated me. Is that is that sound kind of weird? No, no, not at I all. Loved, and I got you know I loved when Liefeld came in with the New Mutants. Um, I didn't see his Hawk and Dove stuff. I I discovered him on the New Mutants, and um, or was it X Force? No, New Mutants was first, right? Yeah, New Mutants became yeah, X Force was huge. Yeah, so X Force then, was I, ridiculous. I just, and Jim Lee, I mean, I love Jim Lee's work. Yeah, uh, Silvestri's work, Will Spartaccio's work, they they just blew me away, and I love that energy. And that's you know I was a huge fan of of Image and those guys. And I got to tell you, if it wasn't for Rob Liefeld, um, and, and despite the fact that I loved all the indie guys, I started to discover the indie comics too. Like, um, there's I, probably if it wasn't for for um, uh, Matt Wagner. Hiring the Panda Brothers to draw the Christina Spar um, Grendel story. That's what got me in. That's what that's what my teacher told me to do. And I love she's like, Billy, this style is a lot like yours. And because it wasn't, you know, it was more, you know, fashiony, I guess, the way they drew the, the Panda Brothers they were. And and then like Rob Liefeld and him and Todd and Jim. And I'm like, man, these guys are great. I, I, I loved it. I just felt, you know, this whole new generation. And, uh, and that's what I went with. And then I said, you know, I tried to work for Marvel and DC myself and nobody would hire me. And then I'm like, wait a minute, you've loved these other guys for, you know, four years now, three, four years. These are the guys work you like, you know, I mean, I love, I love the Kubert boys too. I love Adam and Andy Kubert's art. Um, but I'm like, shit, why don't I just do what I do? They're doing their own books when I do my own book. And that was that. And that's, Crazy. Where, she and that's where she came from. Chris uh, Chris Thacker had a question in the chat. He goes, Mr. Tucci, what was the comic book that was the one? Uh, I'd have to say it was that amazing Spider-Man Spider 300. 300. Yeah. Yep. That, that's Good. what it was. It got me. And that's why I did the, well, you know me, I don't, I don't pay a lot of attention to other comics, you know, anymore until yeah. really everybody started crowdfunding. Um, but I didn't know that everyone did the damn amazing Spider-Man number 300 homage. 
when I did it. <laughs> Mine had these eyes. I did ours for a 25th anniversary of she, you know? Yeah. And yeah, then all of a sudden that book sold out so fast because there's this, there was a whole huge collectible market for it. Cause people love that. People just collect that. Band. Love that pose. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, what? So that, yeah, there's a lot of iconic poses like that that people buy just because of that. I think that's why, uh, you know, on top of Marat Michaels being amazing anyway, but he is the king of variants. He is the king of homage variants. And man, that dude, that dude kills it with some of his stuff. But yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. And he's got, he's got, got yeah, and he it. knows which ones to do. Yeah. And then put a little, little, little stamp on it. And I'm like, damn, little Marat <laughs> Michaels done it again. Yeah. Well, let me let me ask you one more question. So, um, you know, back when you released she, you know, she was first uh, first came out in the Razor Annual, like yes. way back in the day. Yep. Um, so back then, when these when these books came out, like uh, the the Bad Girls era, as as it was known, and as Rob Liefeld talked about on his recent podcast, Rob's Observations, where he. Uh, he definitely talked a lot about old Billy Tucci, didn't he? Dude, he made my day. I could not yeah. believe that. I, I didn't think he knew the hell I was when it first <laughs> came out. But um maybe he's just doing too nice because he's too nice of a guy. <laughs> well, like all the all the other things like Razor, you know, Razor had a unique, I want to say uniform outfit. I don't know, it was not really the greatest. Uh, you know, Lady Death came out, of course, she was like she was pretty pretty badass with, with yeah. her outfit that she wore and stuff. And then she came out, which was also incredible with that iconic look with the big shoulders, kind of like what you have, what you're kind of showing right now. How much of that came from the the Fashion Institute? Well, you want to know where the shoulders came? Well, you want to know where this, the, the, the arm guards? Yes. The arm guards she has down here, Anna wears here. First of all, holy crap, look who's here, bro. Clint. Yes. What's up, Clint Stoker? Hot damn, it's been a long time since we heard from you, brother. I hope you are good, my friend. And thank you for saying that. Great to see you, man. Really great to see you, Clint. One of the good guys. Been a long time since we talked to Clint Stoker. Anyway, sorry. No, it's but okay. I digress, Dr. B. Um, but I it, it's from a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toy. The samurai Jesus. toy is where really? I got this from. And then I and then I and then I, I got rid of that. And then I but I kept it, the arm guards from, from the, the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toy. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty awesome. Yep. If you Google like 19, I don't know what year that would be, say 1992 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle samurai toy. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, Let's I'm, 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 looking, I'm looking, I'm looking right now. All right. He's like, yeah. He's, I think it's Leonardo. I think it it's the Leonardo. One, it was toy. one from the movie, right? What year is that? It's like ninety two. It had to be yeah, Turtles three. Yeah, nineteen ninety two. Turtles three. Do you have the? Yeah, can you share it? Uh, I can share my screen. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to approve it. Uh. What's up, blood? Is that a problem? A boom. No, I just had to share it. There it is. Let's see. Is that it? Uh, let me look. No. Samurai Leo. Samurai no, Leo. hang on. I got to go bigger with it. No, he didn't have. No, no, he wasn't full samurai kitted out. He just had samurai stuff on him. Oh man, that's wrong. I know, man. It might be, it's Leonardo. It's Leonardo because he had the swords. I'm sorry, Doctor Blevins. I'm no, right. I'm sorry. I couldn't find it. No, I, I misled you, my friend. It wasn't full blown samurai. It, he had like samurai stuff. If that makes any sense. Gotcha. Ninety one. No, it's not they, they did. 1992, they went samurai out with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three, where April gets now. Maybe it was 91. Feudal, feudal Japan. I don't know, dude. Yeah, they weren't a feudal Japan. It was it was more of a ninja with samurai elements to them. God, it wasn't full blown samurai. Man, it was just partial blown samurai. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're still live on Coleman. 
Hey, what's up with that, Von Coleman? I don't know. You still alive, Von Coleman? Von Coleman's Von Coleman's still like are you still alive? I know. Von Coleman? Like... <laughs> <laughs> Billy, oh, you, said Von, you said Von Coleman's the future of comics. Von Coleman. Well, people, the kids like Von Coleman. Von Coleman. Dude, I have such a great Von Coleman story. I have so Dude, many, so dude, many. Gotta, I got to hear Coleman your story. Von Coleman story. Oh my god! So I was, I was watching, I was watching some of his old, uh, his old videos from his YouTube channel, and I guess like he had something for film school where he had to ask, like he he had to do like a film or whatever it is, uh, like basically describing who he is and everything like that. So I watched this thing, and it was. Uh, it was pretty good. There was there's just this video of this girl, and she's like, "Oh yeah, like I like I like I like Von Coleman a lot. Like I remember Von Coleman came up to me one day and he was talking to me. And he's like, "Hey, how are you going?" She's like, "He was definitely hitting on me. He was ah. definitely, definitely hitting on me." But she's like, "I wasn't giving him the time of day." Oh and snap! Then like, and then it cuts to other people talking. Then it comes back to her, and she's like, "Yeah, I could use a little more Von Coleman in my life." <laughs> It was like it was just like it was so weird. It was so weird. Did you know? Did you know that Von Coleman? Man, I'm just busting him out because I know he's in chat and he can't do nothing about he it. Can't do nothing. So Von Coleman considers himself a huge comic book nerd, right? Like he. Dude, Von he, Coleman just sent me a text saying, "Let me on the stream or I'll kill you." <laughs> Dang. Did I tell you that Von Coleman has not read the Infinity Gauntlet? What? Yeah, that's what I said. Or I lost shame. it. I lost it. I lost it. Hey man, you know what's right here? You see that 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 painting, that that drawing? It's like blank. Yeah, that's not some trouble of a serious nature. Uh, cover original cover art. That nice. thing slid down. The tape dried up or something. It slid down like Christmas time, and I haven't even touched it. Move it up. <laughs> Dude, I was about to say I haven't seen I've seen the the painting and stuff next to the bookshelf that's to your right, but I haven't seen I haven't seen that picture or the the she the she lithograph up there in the upper left hand corner. I haven't seen this anything from this angle. Yeah, you still don't see that that picture though, do you? <laughs> no, no, I still don't see it. I got daddy, his daddy. This is our honeymoon. Look how cute she was. Look at that little cutie, dude. Dude, want to see? Want to see Debbie's big hair? Is Debbie at the at the New York City Motorcycle Show in January 1989? Were you born yet, Blevins? In 90? Man, I was born in '77. What? Oh, that's right. You you were getting ready to go to that duck pin championship, weren't you? Yeah. In, Von in, Coleman. Uh, Von Coleman said, "Yeah," and then Blevins made a weird passive aggressive post towards me about it. Really weird. <laughs> I did. I did make. I did make a post. It was like a troll, a passive no, aggressive it wasn't a, troll. It wasn't a troll. I was. Uh, I was like. I was like. I could not believe this because you know it's kind of like it's kind of like if somebody says, "Man, I tell you what, I think that this motorcycle is the best motorcycle that I've ever ridden in my life. This motorcycle is the best. It's like better, better than a you know, better than a Kawasaki." And he's like, "Oh, I've never, I've never ridden a Kawasaki." It's like it's like better. It's like well, well how like better than a better than a Harley Davidson? Oh, I've, I've never I've never rode a Harley Davidson, and I'm like, well, how can you say that this is the best motorcycle that if, that's out there if you haven't done it? Like, how can you use? How can you have an opinion if you haven't done all the research? Right. Dang. Oh my god. I hope Vaughn knows that I definitely like that dude a lot because he's definitely he's I'm not saying he's crying in the post, but he's crying. <laughs> hey Dr. B, you gonna you gonna try to head up to Morristown? Yeah, for the for the garden. Yeah, I, I just, Garden State Comic Fest. I asked, I I asked earlier, I said uh I said if I came, would would one of you guys be able to pick me up from the airport? Oh, you gotta talk to old Blevins. I'm gonna be working, man. I'm Blevins. I mean, you gotta talk to Scala. I'm getting in there working. early. I'm getting. I'm getting in early. I'm gonna go to. I can't drive. I, I'm not gonna drive all the way from north from from New York south down to Newark. 
go back up north again. That that doesn't you gotta have to find somebody on the way up. Yeah, I'm just saying I could time it so I could be on the Frag is driving, I think. I think old Frag is driving. God, that'd be nuts if Frag drove. I might ask him, see if he wants to I don't know if he's coming with his family or anything like that, or if he's just coming solo. Mm. Man. But uh, dude, Stippling Vaughn is now going. Dude, into Stippling Vaughn, Vaughn yeah, th- we're gonna have we're having some Vaughn on Vaughn action. Vaughn on Vaughn, <laughs> Vaughn on Vaughn action. You know, oh, and, and there goes and there goes Vaughn. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's. I said you can have an opinion; it's just not worth anything. Oh man, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's messed up, dude. Vaughn, uh. Vaughn knows a lot of Vaughn knows a lot of people. Vaughn knows a lot of people. Both the both our Vaughns do. Yeah. Yeah, Stiplin Vaughn, he's like, man, I'll... Stiplin Vaughn sent me a beautiful award. Where did I put it? I gotta put it up. I put it over there with my other stuff. I gotta hang up. Best value. Best 2022, value. Which tomorrow I gotta submit that book to the Eisners. The uh on the bus. Nice. Man, I tell you, um, I almost did a, I almost did a deal like so. I was, I was researching like super rare comic books and everything, right? And I was like, um, like we had Kevin Eastman on the show the other day, and we were talking about how Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird gave one of their buddies who owned a Golden Apple Comics. Or Golden Apple Comic Con, or something like that. Well, what made, Golden Apple in L.A. Bill, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Bill Leibowitz's gave yeah, Bill I, think, I think that's what it was. So they had this book called Turtle Mania that they gave out for this. You know, they made it. It just had sketches that were never in any comics or anything. And they printed like they printed like a hundred and thirty-five of them or something. Mm. So it was a hundred of them that were white. There was twenty-five. 25 that were silver and then there was 10 that were gold oh and on the back of the 10 gold ones they numbered them one through 10 they drew a picture on the back of them so now like all these years later nine of them are accounted for but no one no one has accounted for number five and nobody knows what the picture is that was on the back of it because all the turtles are accounted for on the back of the other ones Oh, that's no right. one knows. No one knows what's on there, and I, I brought that up to uh, to Kevin Eastman. He 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 was like, "Man, that's a great question." Yeah, Billy's going to stream straight into the professionals. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to stream straight in. Straight in. Yeah, I'll stop. I don't know. Maybe I'll go to five. I gotta I gotta lay this out, and then maybe what I'll do tomorrow I'll, I'll stream live again, and and finish and do it and finish it up. If nice. you guys, if y'all don't mind joining yeah. me. I'll be able to come on with my camera and stuff. I just wasn't able to do it today. We had a we had a big windstorm and it kind of like uh, knocked the tiny house to the side and broke broke some of the concrete bricks. So they had what? To it's just oh, the, yeah. the, t- the tiny house. Yeah, it didn't fall over, but it came close. <clears throat> God bless. Yeah, it was it was bad. Dang. It was bad. So the so the uh, the guy from the city came out and he's like, "Yeah, I wouldn't recommend you going in there." And I was like, "All right." So they came out early this morning and and replaced the bricks. Some of the bricks had just broken in half. I was like, "Wow." I was like, "I need to lose some weight." I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyway, I'm serious, old Doctor B. If you want to come, uh, you could you could you know the the Newark Airport is not far from Morristown. So you could Uber or Lyft. You said I'm taking Uber. You think so from the from the airport? Well, let's see. Let's do a little search here. Unless you want to, let's do a little. Let's Google do some. Search. Let's do some maths. Let's see. Drive. Hey, you want me to send Von Coleman this link? From no, because I'm going to close that too. Oh, okay. Drive from uh, Newark Airport. To Morris Town. Sorry, Vaughn. I was going to send it to you, bro. Yeah, no, 28 minutes, bro. That's it. 28 minutes? 28 minutes. God, that's, yeah, I was going to say this going to be like 100 bucks. No. That much? Yeah. Is that how long that is? Probably. I don't know about that. 
Probably. Yeah, now, Bob, I'm gonna I want to close that. I want to do this, and then I got to do something with Matthew. Nice. And then I got to I got to come back and prepare for the bros because I've been talking too much today and having too good of a time instead of drawing. Yeah, who who all else came on? I had to leave when Jimmy Reyes came on. Did anybody else come on after Jimmy? No, nah, after Jimmy, that was it. No, nah, no, nah, Dan Lawson came on. Oh, Dan Lawson. Nice. I mean, Dan, Dan Lawless, not Dan Lawson. Yeah. Dan Lawless. Let's see how this is looking here. Yeah, see, it's kind of nice. Yeah. I'm not really going with all, all the hair and swords and all that jazz. Yeah, there's going to be a nice cover, I think. Some swords. You're going to put some swords in there? You're going to put some swords in there. And some cherry blossoms. Right. Some cherry blossoms somewhere around in there? I don't think so. Not for the ash can no. cover. No. I got to figure out what to do with it. But I'm just too distracted. Like I said, I, I went on, like, invited. But like, come on on. Yeah, I was like, it turned into a crowdfunding show. So yeah, it did. Like, yep, yep. <laughs> like, hey, let's go check this. It was good to see Graham. I was I was excited Graham came on. Graham's a good guy. Yep, and then Jimmy. Yep. Jimmy said I didn't I didn't sign up for his deal when I absolutely was signed up for it. I think he got he got confused when you said I didn't get the link for this show. Oh. That's because that's what you were saying, right? I didn't get the link. Yeah, You're farting around online all day, bro. Bro, I know. I got to get out of here soon. So Hey, we got to set up the um, bro stream for tonight. Yes, we do. And I have to do my research. What's a bros about tonight, Scala? Conspiracy theories. It's a bros favorite conspiracy stories. I want to we... know. I, I have a conspiracy theory, and I would like to know what you guys think. And it involves... The reason that uh, Marvel has shelved the Ultraverse. I want to hear your theory because I know the answer. Oh, do you know I, the I, answer? Yeah, I know I'm the answer. Draw. You guys talk, I'll draw. <laughs> do you know the answer for really? I know the answer. I th I think they did it because they were going to secretly open up a second, uh, like a like a triple A comic book company. They were going to open up a triple A comic book company. <laughs> Kind of like they had the big leagues, but then they had a secondary company where they had like their triple A artists where they sent them down and you get oh, you got called up to the big leagues to draw in the big books. And what if they send that like so that they send old veterans down, like, yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah, and they get yeah, the guys sorry. that drew like the Robin, yes, yeah, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> with squirrel girl artists and stuff, yeah, those, those uh, those A listers. They yeah. shelved they shelved them because they felt they didn't fit in the Marvel universe. But surely they fit a lot more than the like the new warriors. You know what? Fleming, I don't believe you and stop calling me Shirley. <laughs> Shirley. <laughs> so what do you, what's the title for the stream tonight, Billy? Bro. It's bro? Okay, great. You didn't do the you didn't do the thing yet? I did. <laughs> it's just conspiracy theories. Come on. Well, what did I what did I do? Oh, I didn't do the damn. You didn't do yet. the thing. I don't have the title. The Dude, bros, the, I think uh, the bros be... divulge in their favorite conspiracy theories. What? I think it should be find out which of these bros is really a deep fake, and have people go look and watch, watch professionals. Which bros is a mole? Figure out figure out if one of the <laughs> one of the bros is really just inside a deep guy. Fake. A deep fake. Yeah. Lepressi did get a start there with Sludge. Oh, I gotta see if this is copyright. Come on, we got the pro I got the promo ready. Let's go. All right, I gotta go then. All right. <laughs> oh, that is royalty free. This is that nice. is pretty Please. good. Yeah, I like that. All right, everybody, listen, you guys are all oh, dude. What's with this? Yeah, but where's JFK? Where's Marilyn you can't throw Rose? no, you can't give everything away in the promo. You can't give everything yeah, away. Right, I love it. I love it. The professional. It. <laughs> the, Come on. Uh, make, can you make conspiracy theories bigger? Make the maybe make the uh, Buzz Aldrin a little bit smaller. Shut up. Well, I'm just so they know. What How the dare is. you? How dare you? God, I'm just saying. Vol Col Von Coleman would have made conspiracy theories bigger. Yeah, you would have. Yeah, you would. Conspiracy theory. We got to have your title, bro. Is that it? Just conspiracy theories. Oof. Nothing exciting. Come on. I don't know where you are. The, the bros. The bros. 
conspiracy theories. Conspiracy the bros theories are true. Signs about their hoes. Like people say all the time, they've seen UFOs. I've seen a BRO. What's up? The bros talk UFOs. The, the BROs talk UFOs. The bros talk. Oh, Vaughn. What Conspiracy. <laughs> Vaughn, bros. Give, us, give us the name, Vaughn. Come on, you're in the chat. Yeah, come, come on, Vaughn. Vaughn. Come on, you want to your your film school let's educated? Talk, Come on. Let, how about this? The bros, the professors, let's talk conspiracy. Conspiracy theory confidential. Conspiracy theory, theory confidential. Stupid. But our our conspiracy theory is like pretty much confidential anyway. That is <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, kind of. Because they're conspiracies, like the, the evidence isn't out there. Conspiracy. The bros talk. Billy's like, I've been on stream way too long. I can't fucking think. <laughs> there you go. Professional conspiracies. Yeah. Nah. How about oh, bro, come on. professional confessionals? What's up? Bros talk. The bros. Bros favorite conspiracies. I don't know. Conspiracy theory time. No. Let's talk conspiracy theories. Let's talk. I think we'll just call it conspiracy theories. Okay, good. <laughs> this the whole time. But it's got to be nice and big, though, you know? No! No! All he, right. said bros, he said bros versus aliens. Bros versus aliens. There you go. Right, listen, guys, we're going to go so we can figure this thing out. Oh, do you believe in conspiracy? Dan had something. There you go. Oh. Do you believe in conspiracy? Do you believe in conspiracies? Believe in conspiracies? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> about the UFOs. I'm gonna wait around to watch the bros. <laughs> the, bro, the bros and their favorites. I don't know what is it. Conspiracy theory. The bro files. I'm stealing this a little bit from he said, Stack. Bro, he said the bros files. The bros files. All right, guys. Listen, we're gonna go. <laughs> Thank you all for joining. We'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. on the professionals here on the Pop XP, where the bros will divulge in their favorite conspiracy theories and debunk a few others, right? That's right. All right. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be amazing. I can't After wait. That song, I'm unsubscribing. Oh, dang. Thanks, <laughs> oh, dude, that's oh, damn. Hey, anyway, guys, I did, please hit the bell. I'm on show. <laughs> Please ring that bell for notifications and please subscribe to the Pop XP. Hey, what's, it sound like you, what's it sound like when you ring that bell, Billy? <laughs> I feel aliens is good <laughs> market. All right. What's it, that's what all it right. sounds like when you all ring right, that bell. All right, guys, you guys rock. We're going to go. And uh, thank you all for joining us. And, uh, and Blevins, this for you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's messed up. Oh, that's fun. That's oh, fun. I like that. That's fun that Brian just keeps getting slapped. Dang. Yeah. Well, nice and 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 I'm gonna open the show with. This. Excuse me. I'd like to ask you a few questions. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all for joining us. I'll see you guys later today, and uh, I'm gonna take us out with a cool video clip. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you in a little while on the Bro Professionals. Where's our little? Uh, mm. Oh, that's a background. I need the videos, man. What, vi what videos? You the want? Videos, man. What, what video? What video? To end it. To end it. There we go. Goodbye. Hey everyone, thank you for joining. Hey everyone. For me to do scout, stop it. <laughs> you were taking too long, man. You were taking too long. All right, you can. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us on Pop XP. If you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content. Also, don't forget to head on over to Twitter and follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon.